he was the first to bring in lyrics. You're not talking death metal lyrics and like he's talking about his childhood. Stuff that we got from Korn and stuff, like he was talking about real everyday shit and then I did the same. And we maybe without telling each other, we were kind of taking our childhood trauma and making it into a sound. So when we played a breakdown on the fucking stage, I knew in my bones, no one could touch yeah, us. It, it meant something. Right? It meant something yeah. because it was something like those notes that the sound of the guitar that you hear on the demos and cleansing. That's like that's in my body. It's not like a sound. Like, like, oh, it sounds cool. Yeah, but it's just it's what I it's what I felt. Real quick before we start, I just wanted to mention that we do these podcast recordings live on stream. We stream every single Wednesday at 6 p.m. EST on Twitch. It's an opportunity for you guys to come hang out, interact, and ask your questions directly to all of our guests. We also have a Discord if you want to keep talking more about Deathcore and Metalcore, or simply to keep up with everything that we're doing, upcoming guests, and all that jazz. I'll leave links to both of these things in the description wherever you are watching or listening. And with that out of the way, please enjoy this episode. Welcome, welcome, welcome to episode 22 of the Brutality Podcast. My name is Dom. I am joined, as always, uh, by my co-host, Yan. And today we have uh, the glorious opportunity to talk to a legend in the scene. Oh, my uh, goodness. Chris Garza of uh, Suicide Silence. Thank you. Thank you so much for being Shut here. Up. How are you doing, man? Uh, I'm <laughs> alive, alive and breathing. Thank you for having me. Appreciate oh, it. Yeah, this too too humble too humble <laughs> no I'm, I'm 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 a mix of humble but also an asshole so i like to combine those two you know <laughs> right right it's kind of kind of balance everything yeah, uh good good karma it's, it's, it's death core a death core is taking two things that don't make sense and you fucking combine that so i'm a i'm a humble but i'm also a lethal ass uh, an asshole so there you go <laughs> there we go it works it works yeah. so yeah, man. I mean, for for what it's worth, I just wanted to start. I don't want to go on a spiel monologue before we we, we get to our, our guest talking here. But I, I had I had to mention this at least off the top. I, I just think uh, all things le all roads lead to suicide silence. I, I just mm. want to say this up front. Um, we, we're we're on like episode 22 right now. We haven't had a million guests, but we try mm. to have a pretty healthy mix between people that have been there, kind of like the OGs, people that were there earlier in the days. Yen and I both, mm. you know, of course, absolutely uh, love the, the the MySpace era, you know, of Deathcore mm -hmm. and all that. But um, there is this revival. There's this, you know, a lot of bands doing the the, the Deathcore thing now. Uh, a lot of br bands bringing back the, uh, the old school Deathcore sound as well. Mm -hmm. And talking to to all of these different people it's not a brutality podcast show if suicide silence doesn't get bring up at least once it just oh, wow. it just happens so uh because cool. i know you've had you've had some i've heard you in interviews and stuff maybe talk about people not uh necessarily giving suicide silence their their flowers you know and 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 talking about you guys as their influence and stuff yeah like, fuck them clearly you guys you know <laughs> <I'm> uh <kidding. laughs> clearly <laughs> in in 2024 you know i see it on both sides people are giving you guys your, your props cool. how, how does it feel for you you know to 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 have come from you know not not being able to be influenced by by deathcore itself but actually kind of create the sound and and to maybe see how it's how it's become now like how do how, how's deathcore for you right now uh to be honest i really haven't enjoyed it really because it's been, been so busy doing like our, our own stuff it's hard to like like i saw slaughter to avail friday at a, a massive venue called a palladium and yeah. here in hollywood i was like and I happened to run into Alex from Malevolence. So we were walking from the parking lot to across the street to the venue. I was like telling him, I was like, man, we, we were playing in front of less than five people and there was no genre. We were in debt, 40K. And this to see where it's gone is like, this is fucking crazy. That was, that, that Slaughter to Prevail show was definitely a moment. I was like, wow, this is, how far the genre has come and where it's going it's not it's not even close to its peak it's pretty it's pretty fucking nuts 
Yeah, I don't think I would have had that on my bingo, like 2024 bingo card, if no. you asked me that in, in 2015, mm-hmm. if <laughs> if we'd be having like a podcast talking about deathcore, let alone deathcore being totally. uh, as big as it is right now, right? It's mm-hmm. kind of kind of crazy to see how how it's coming back and, and, in, and in a big way, right? Yeah. Um, how's it been for you guys, I guess, as the band, like, because I'm assuming this revival has some sort of effect on on suicide silence, right? Like I'm assuming there's even people that are finding out about you guys for the for the first time, you know, because of this revival mm-hmm. and and all this. Stuff. Like how do, how does it feel for you? Have you felt that at all? Uh, no. <laughs> I, I wish I wish yeah. I wish I, I, I have like a better like like response, but it's just so mm. the. Suzanne Sans is in such a different category of music and band like this with chaos behind the scenes like uh, the business side and tragedies and all, all, all that shit. It's really hard to enjoy it. But there's there's um, I do. Obviously, there's there's new people at, at, at the shows and combining yeah. with like really old school uh, Suzanne Sans fans. So we are and there's. Yeah, the old fans and the new fans buy a merch. So, so we do, we we do see it, but it's not as much as people think because it's so mm. separated. Like, like the Lorna Shore thing and Suzanne's thing is very separate. Like, you like you people. I think will will be like surprised how they're not how they're not really as connected as right. There isn't as much of a crossover no, as you'd expect. No, we're that's kind of crazy to hear. Actually, I, I would have never expected that because mm-hmm. I go I go to a show now and I don't recognize anyone anymore. Right, like sure. the people at, at shows right now, it's all it's all the young kids, you know that that were that are new to this whole thing. So mm-hmm. it's kind of kind of crazy to to hear you say that you know maybe that that crowd doesn't transfer over as much as mm-hmm. as we'd figure. No, it just I mean I learned I live my life with a from like a few Jimi Hendrix quotes. Like you're just you have to constantly remind people. Because people will will yeah. forget about you quick. It will happen to Lorna Shore at some point, and I, I'm just excited where where they're at. But as years go on, dude, like people will people grow up. They they, they have families, and and they move on. You have to just repeatedly like just remind people, and um, we even like even like our own fans. We uh, we we've, we've obviously uh put out some uh some stinkers uh, as far as like records, and I lost a I lost a massive fan base. So we. Just have to constantly play a show and like just remind people. Uh, yeah. We're probably we're probably gonna do that whole whole a whole career until until we die. So luckily, I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's not an easy thing to stay relevant. Like when you've been because Suicide Sounds. I mean, uh, you you guys are still super big, but back then everybody was just talking about you guys. You know, with with the cleansing and everything you mm-hmm. you've made. Like when you've been on top, it makes it, I believe, even harder to you know keep that momentum or even yes. stay relevant. So many of these amazing big bands now are not even. Ben anymore so mm-hmm. i i feel like that in itself um people don't see the behind the scenes and the pressure mm-hmm. of releasing the next album and kind of trying not to be in the shadow of what you did is a very difficult thing and mm-hmm. i just i just wanted to say that it's it's very impressive that you guys managed to do like you've been through a lot mm-hmm. but today i've you, you look at your numbers you look at the shows you look mm-hmm. at everything uh you even have new fans and stuff like that like mm-hmm. do do you do you like how does it feel to you know still still beat i know it it, it sounds like dumb question but mm-hmm. like i mean in terms of like it must be full circle to know that people still look up to you and still you know think you're you're, you're relevant and stuff like that like how does it feel mm-hmm. as a as a ben after all of that a lot of uh i feel very lucky lucky like i always say it's hope like i mean it's a miracle like we're even still a band yeah it's just you know things obviously i i could sit here and on past podcasts as well past stories i've told i, I could see and be like yeah we're i love this i'm obsessed with it and i'm not going away but i, I can't predict like other members mm-hmm. and they're what, what they're going on with their lives so yeah i feel very lucky you know it's just that that we're still that we're still going i'm i'm still going Uh, and uh, a lot of other guys uh, are still here. Um, 22 years, man, right? Yeah, it's like, 22. It's crazy. That's, that's an insane number when you think about it, right? Mm-hmm. For for like uh, 
for a musical group and and you were talking about you know the hardships you guys went through and and it could have been you know the stinkers as as you said but mm -hmm. but the tragedies as well you know like any yeah. A, a lot of bands would have given up after a lot for of sure. these different events, right? So it's, yeah, it's it's a lot of resilience for sure. <laughs> totally. I mean, you're talking. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy here. Like 22 years, and as far as like even recently, you, you, you know, you both brought up like how do I feel about deathcore now and all of this stuff, and it's I really truly felt like resilient, and like I think I'm over it. Like early February. I mean, I almost quit the I quit the podcast, my personal podcast in February, and I was prior to that, I was I've I forgot how many times I was going to quit the band. I forgot, yeah. like yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> too many to count. Yeah, too many like, <laughs> like to count. And I think February was kind of like my last little bit of bitch I had in, in my bones, and I, I had some friends. Uh, you know, give me a clear head and obviously the podcast is still going. So I didn't quit and same, yeah. same with the band. And, uh, so yeah, I'm not really sure what that comes from God or I, I don't know, but, uh, yeah, I, I didn't quit. I have a good, I have a great support system. My, my guys in the band are, uh, I guess have, uh, they've, they've trusted me you know and that that took a lot of learning and i had to you know i had to, ex I had to force myself to accept this role of being a face of a band when the previous face died and uh mm -hmm. and uh with you know once it's it's all it's very easy to keep the band going when there's success and there's hype and you know, all this money but when there's no money and people are dying uh all, all that all, all the bullshit is like stripped away and then you know who are you and uh, i had to do a lot of stuff and i had to force myself to accept that uh i'm a leader and i had to lead the band and that kind of accepting that role and really taking it on and i guess uh, doing it successfully i guess i could say we're, we're, we haven't bro broken up yet so i guess it's, it's good enough and yeah, uh something's working <laughs> yeah there's a lot of uh ate a lot of humble pie and uh, they've trusted me eddie's trusted me mark dan kenny our recent drummer ernie they've shit that money can't buy because there is no money uh they yeah. they, they trusted me then um Oh, fuck, it's, it's it's fucking kind of crazy when like you you uh, you you like accomplish something. It's like damn, like shit. We're we're still around, and uh, I'm still, you know, I'm I'm a boss now. This is this is fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. crazy. It's crazy. Like you you guys, you know, I'm pretty sure you guys can imagine you you'll have your own podcast a few years ago, where you'll be, you know, it's just stuff stuff like that. You know, I've I've seen you know I've seen you know Yan come a long way. You know. With, 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 with his speech and the way you talk on, on videos and I see that it's like damn it's, it's kind of crazy how we like we start to become what was yeah. uh, um, unattainable it. you know it's like, <laughs> yeah. so, so you guys know how it is and um that just comes from that first fucking brick dude I I, I say this a lot but that first brick of suicide sounds is impossible to break no one could break it everyone has tried uh <laughs> every, every, whatever like chaos was thrown at us has been thrown at us even like financial loss death i mean that first i owe it to being ourselves from the day one when i was in high school and starting the suicide sounds like it was just it was us it was me it was there's no there's no there's no height there's no nothing it's just that's what that first break was just infused with honesty and us and um so when you rip away all the bullshit and things happen there's tragic everything like we had that first break so all we had to do is kind of okay when something went wrong we we could uh we could rebuild because our foundation no matter how bad things got it was always there and uh i could only go back to that how are we still here well day day one has been real and honest that, that's hard though that because i think a lot of bands for lack of a better word they'll get corrupted right like there's there's usually a point where you you, you, might, who, but you yeah. might start off that way <laughs> right but too. whatever the 
the fucking uh, the algorithms happen or mm-hmm. you know like you, you're, you're chasing relevance or you're trying different things that, mm-hmm. that aren't yourself anymore totally. you know you're chasing trends or a lot of bands totally. end up going through that sort of thing so it is yeah. commendable for for a band like you guys to, to mm-hmm. keep at it and, and to go back to that core value because I think that you have to have some sort of a for, like a, a foresight to, you have totally. to be aware of it to a certain extent right to, to keep at that totally yeah I mean a lot of foresight and um I mean, it's it's one of those things that just comes with age. You know, we've been around the corner, so we already know what the corner is. So I try not to be a dad around any bands. So they kind of have to have their own thing. And I, I see what other bands make mistakes because I made, I made all of them. You know, a recent band, they're massive in the heavies, they're massive. Uh, mm. I just know, oh, you drank, you drank the Kool-Aid, you know? And uh, <laughs> I, I, I know, I know, what the cola tastes like because I drank it and it's uh I'm ashamed of myself and uh I'm gonna probably spend the rest of my days in my career so it's not fixing and undoing like the fakeness of um you know becoming who I, I wasn't you know it's just and hopefully they all figure it out but I, I know I know what it's like because I made all those all those mistakes <laughs> yeah it's crazy yeah. It's, uh, by the way, so I, I need to say that first of all, as biggest compliment that you even paid attention to my videos. I didn't know that. Um, mm-hmm. When I made my Suicide Science video, it was, and Dumb can attest because I told him many times, it was my most important video. I was emotional doing it. Oh, it was cool. very, like, I cannot shut up about Mitch and the influence that he had on me and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. when I did the video, I was like, okay, I need to pay justice to the band. Like it was a, oh, cool. for me, it was a big thank you, you know, for shaping my life and where I am. I wow. mean, I'm pretty sure I have three of your albums just on my wall. I There's a demo cool. there, cleansing we can't see because of my chair, but I think you, you guys are there crazy. three times. It's crazy, so. man. I still listen to these things, like even the demo and stuff. I still think it, it's awesome. The the episode you did with the OGs is still one of my favorite with oh, Josh sick. and all that. It was so yeah. cool. That was cool. Yeah. Josh is the coolest guy no, I think is. I've ever yeah, heard. Man. He's so cool. Special um, guy. So I, I just, I wanted to say thank you because I was, um, you know, when I do a video, I always have this kind of nerve wracking like hoping that it pays justice and that my informations mm-hmm. were, were right and that you know it comes across um you know as positive i'm not into the drama you might have noticed i'm i don't really touch about like negative stuff for clickbait i just sure. focus on the music the account- cool. and, and all that so it's so cool that you've noticed because mm-hmm. it's intimidating to have a camera on you even if you're alone even totally. if there's not many people it's it's scary it and it is when you have when when english is your second language and you basically uh destroy the language with with your accent and and all the words it's also scary so of all of these things but it's so cool that you you've noticed that because you come a long way um, man already it's cool thank you thank you so much man it's like i, see I, it. I know when i see your old <laughs> one of my old video i'm like Oh God, oh. Like, I notice things and I'm like, it's, it's rough. I feel you. Yeah. Oh, I get it. Out here. I, I look at the audio, the colors and everything. I'm like, what the I hell know. was that? I feel um, you. But it's part, it's definitely part of the process. And, and I've been, I think dumb too, right? Like we've been watching Garza's podcast, like your podcast since the very beginning. Um, Thank you. And I've noticed a big, I could be wrong, but I've noticed like a big, uh, your personality comes out way more. Uh, like if you, like since the beginning, like you, mm-hmm. you talked about life, you bring up mm-hmm. like Europeans and stuff and you're not scared about, you know, talking about anything. And I think it's awesome. I think the, the scene needs that and um it's 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 very cool to very cool to see man like we're all fans here so i I wanted to say that and uh yeah so it's it's it it, it's just it's a wild journey and i think your answer was very beautiful about um you know not being afraid of saying the mistakes the mistakes you do uh the, the road you take and everything it's it's all part of the process but it's even harder to accept that and acknowledge that and it feels like you did so mm. big props on that cool and not to go for 15 hours because i could talk for 15 hours if i do um but i also wanted to say that what eddie did stepping up in a band like that it like the 
the biggest amount of respect that I could possibly have goes to him for that, like filling mm -hmm. the. I think it's safe to say that Mitch was the biggest icon of deadcore, like very easily. It's a mm -hmm. fair statement. And even today, he's still influencing millions of people. So mm -hmm. taking that role, not many people could do that. And not only that, but he's super nice, great guy. He's doing the job perfectly and he's mm -hmm. still relevant. I wanted to say, like, I, I think we've talked many times about that here, but I think it deserves um, recognition as well. So cool. It says, um, dumb. Next, next question. Like, I, I wanted to pay my, my respect. It's all good. I, no, but I mean, not, we, not, not needed. We, we, it's fine. <laughs> we, we could uh we could switch gears a little bit we we yeah. love we love doing the deep dives we, we love yeah. going all the way back not not that we necessarily need a a history lesson or anything let's go. but i let's uh let's talk about uh you know you were talking about playing to five kids earlier let's talk let's talk about <laughs> showcase showcase theater cool and uh playing with hardcore bands and in that kind of early day mm -hmm. stuff like i'd love for you to maybe speak on you know how, how that experience was you know playing with bands that weren't now, it weren't deathcore because deathcore wasn't a thing, right? And, yeah. and maybe not like uh, close at all to what you guys were, were doing. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, there was definitely less of a acceptance with like the metal scene. Like, yeah, I mean, you would have like animosity. You play with like six feet under. It didn't work. It just didn't fucking mm -hmm. work. And like bands like us, like playing any kind of metal show is just not going to happen like they have they wanted nothing to do with us so but uh we had but we came up in in the in, inland empire hardcore scene you know homo showcase theater etc so uh we had some friends like in bound on blood and stuff and uh just in the area riverside corona we would just hang out and they started putting us on shows and um yeah I grew up. Yeah. How was that received early on? Like, as you say, the metalheads weren't 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 about it. Was it was it cool with the with the hardcore, hardcore kids? At, at hardcore like a... instant. Okay, cool. Well, and imagine because I mean, hardcore. I mean, at its essence, it's just groove. It's just more groove, 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 and breakdowns. Mm -hmm. And we were already like, you know, was jamming, uh, bleeding through old old throwdown uh all, all like all like the orange county inland empire like breakdown hardcore stuff like so i was like okay oh, this i just fucking that and i love corn and slipknot and i got i was getting in, into death metal like and then i was kind of combined it all <laughs> and yeah and then um just from like just because I, I i i wanted to do it and then, uh, so we have all these breakdowns. Of course, we're going to play the hardcore shows and they're going to lose their shit. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, I, I, especially like you have metal heads, like guys with long hair playing with people with short hair. We're rocking, we're, <laughs> we're, we're, we're going crazy. The other bands are standing still. We're tuning an A, they're tuning the fucking e, C. All, all, all these things were so different, <laughs> but uh, but there was like the breakdown. And, um, you know, you just, you can't deny raw emotion you you just can't deny it and uh we we the, me the metal heads could somehow you know they that that's a scene <laughs> i fight, i still will never it. get <laughs> it, it, i yeah. will never get the like el elitist shit i mean it, it's still kind of that way uh yeah. I, I did a podcast last year uh with like in a elitist channel i was like i just don't get like <laughs> i get it like i mean i'm not as good or their bands are better i i I don't get it, but it's his, it's his own thing. Well, I have, I do have a theory. Why? Okay, let's hear because it. Because not a lot of chicks go to metal shows, so they're all they're all fucking pissed off. Yeah, honestly, honestly, I'm not <laughs> kidding. I've thought about that as well. Like because Straight up. when Deathcore came out, it was just a different aesthetic, and it was working, and it was mm -hmm. big, and it's hard to explain, but I feel like. And again, like that metal people would hate me for that, but it, it sounded heavier. Like, I'm very sorry. Like it, it did. Like, if you look at your early material, I love that metal music. I'm mm -hmm. not against that. I'm never going to be against it, but I just mean those breakdowns were sick. Like something mm -hmm. was going on and I feel like it's people are scared of change. It was still. changing. Mm -hmm. It's still, still today. Yeah. Right. Like you do something new and people are pissed off. That's 
just sure. how it is. Sure. And I feel like that core was that because um, if you look at your early material, like the demo and all that, it's basically brutal death, like super that's, brutal that's death. That's what I never understood. There was so much like brutal death influence to you it, right? Think. Like how, how could a, how think. could someone who enjoys metal or death metal not enjoy that music? No. Because it has ones and zeros all of a sudden, like yeah. Yeah. part of a song. Big it's so slam fucking weird. Bars. And, and like you, imagine they, they enjoy the song up until the breakdown. Like, like you start playing your set there oh this is sick and then a breakdown comes oh no (laughs) yeah like i mean and and the breakdowns let's be honest i understand if a death metal guy listens to a metalcore gimmicky breakdown i get it i Mm -hmm. get it i still love those but i get it but your breakdowns were just straight up like super heavy and like way closer to slam than to metalcore so that's Mm -hmm. the part i'm never gonna get like it worked like you guys would have played with that metal it would have worked but somehow if if you were classified as deathcore Mm -hmm. if one time someone dared call the band deathcore it was over you know it's 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 so weird i I would like to i'm very curious about something Mm -hmm. and i always wanted to, to ask that when you guys were recording the early material did it feel like you had something special was about to happen or was just a moment like was there like a little moment where you you looked at for example like during a a, a jam session or whatever like did you have this moment where you looked at those guys and you were like i think we're about to do something i think we're about to do something sick or some something big did it feel like you, you were about to you know make it or it was just like friends building something and just being in the moment i'm, mm-hmm. I'm very curious yeah it, it felt like something was was brewing i mean that's i mean for like multiple reasons like like out, out of the gates i want to suicide i saw suicides in arenas like out of the gates and this is like this weird thing i battle with like like what is that what's what's the difference between saying something doing something and there's delusion i don't know i i wasn't i to this day i say shit people are like what the fight but it happens is i it's this i wasn't delusional i i my goal was to put this style of music in arenas my band and and other bands so maybe that kind of manifested and then i'm sure and then you uh, have to believe it for it to happen for sure right yeah like there's a part of that that has to like the the north star you're moving towards something that's mm-hmm. like your your decisions are yeah. to move towards something right totally totally and then we'll like we'll like write songs shit that came up like the demo like pre mix stuff like we'll like we'll write a fucking breakdown part and then like I'll roll over the floor laughing because it's just funny. <laughs> I'll be I'll be on the ground like come on my guitar like this is fucking crazy. This is funny. This is, it, it's, I mean at, at the time it was more innocent and this France hanging out laughing being stupid, saying shit that will get us canceled today. It's just we're, we're just being you know it's being kids, kids in this ha- having a good time, but also having like like the focus of like this is we're, we're writing music, we're playing what we want to play. There, there was no outside influence. Okay, we're gonna write this because it's cool and it's gonna work. It was just like I want the song to be this way and this is like this, the tuny, and we and then we were right and then we were rock out in a garage. Like we mm-hmm. we play shows in a garage that all current deathcore bands can't even do live in front of thousands of people. Yeah. Like we we would rock the fuck out in our garage. And so by the time we like went out to a show, like, yeah, we it was kind of like second nature. It was like, oh, we, we already do this, but nobody watching. It's about our parents probably in the kitchen be like, what the fuck are you doing <laughs> the, in there? The neighbors. <laughs> neighbors. And I, I, we were very blessed with really cool neighbors. So I'm like, what the fuck are they doing over there? <laughs> like, so, but I, we, we've had really cool neighbors and um, it definitely felt special out, out of the gates to to even like recording that fucking demo. Is sit, sitting back, hearing it back and, and, and that fucking shitty couch. Like, this is like, there's fucking, this is heavy as fuck. It sounds sick. And that kind of is, I mean, I think naturally you just get better at it. Whatever you think better is, you just, you keep hanging out, you go out to shows, you're inspired. We were in it. We were, you know, just hanging out with people, being social and got in the garage, jammed, laughed, ate at Denny's. Uh, it's just, we were just kids and it felt, it was being kids and also have the focus and it felt, it felt, 
special out of the gates. And then when Mitch joined, it was just over. I mean, I, 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 oh, yeah, you, I you saw something when, when Mitch joined. Yeah. I, I 100% know this is like that, like the combination of me and Mitch was just like, it was undeniable. I knew 100% no one's going to touch this. Like, this is no, this is no way. He had the look, the, the, uh, he would rock out after I told him in the garage, hey, you better fucking move, dude. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll be headbanging in a garage. I'll, I'll, I'll like look at him, like, you better start fucking moving, dude. And like, <laughs> this, I, yeah, and it, and I, I, we're, all, we're already friends. And then, um, yeah, it just felt, it was, it was, it was un, undeniable. It was undeniable. Yeah, I think, uh, and and you know when I built when I did uh, the the video, I, I watched honestly like fifty thousand interviews, <laughs> and and you, I went back like in two thousand, you know, six, seven. Let's like go. I was watching every interviews, and uh, the beautiful thing about him too, I find, is that there was never any doubt. Like even mm. in the very first interviews, he was no. talking as we're doing it mm -hmm. it's gonna be like no doubt at all like still no. humble still super nice mm -hmm. like to every single interviews but it was impressive to me how you know confident like you talked about mm -hmm. manifestation i firmly believe in that like mm -hmm. a lot i really feel like we could because this whole thing we're doing right there i kind of tried to manifest it so i've been sure. like i've been it seems to be working Sick. um but a would it be fair to say that I, your connection within your band since the beginning, it really feels like friends together, you know, mm -hmm. and even today, right? I watch your mm -hmm. podcast that yeah. you, you've been doing and stuff. Your podcast like, is sick. Yeah. It's super sick. Yeah, it's very fun. Like, I, please keep doing that. It's awesome sick. and Appreciate funny. Um, but would you say that it's a big part of it? Like, obviously, I think it is. But the fact that since the beginning, it's friends having a strong connection. Like, 100%. It, it it's was, part of the success, right? It is. It's. I mean, chemistry is so huge, man. I mean, that's kind of something I, I see lacking today in like uh in in like the heavy genre, like this, like this, that chemistry. It's being stupid kids in, in in a room, just laughing over stupid shit. And I didn't really know, like, we I, we didn't do it on purpose. It's like, oh yeah, we're just we're just kids having fun, being being friends. But I, now I look back. At the time, I was like, "Oh yeah, we're, yeah, there is, there was like that in-person chemistry. We're his, again, we were, we're his friends, and so, uh, and once you, and once you, once you brought in like fame and money, like that, that got kind of uh, ruined. But, uh, but prior to that, yeah, it, it being friends in a room, I mean, might might even be more important than music because then, because then there was like a, there was an unspoken trust that, and um, Mitch at the time he brought in like. He brought it. He was the first to bring in lyrics. Like you're talking, like like you're, you're not talking death metal lyrics, and like you're talking, he's talking about his childhood, like stuff like we yeah. stuff that we got from corn and stuff. Like he was talking about real everyday shit, and then I did the same. And we maybe without telling each other, we were kind of taking our childhood trauma <laughs> and, and 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 making it into a sound. So when we played a breakdown on the fucking stage, I knew in my bones no one could touch yeah, us. It, it meant something. Right? It meant something yeah. because 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 it was mm -hmm. something like those notes that the sound of the guitar that you hear on the demos and cleansing. That's like that's in my body. It's not like a sound. Like, like, oh, it sounds cool. Yeah, but it's just it's what I it's what I felt and. It, Play, we didn't play breakdowns for it. I might contradict myself, but uh, <laughs> we did want to be the heaviest thing ever. But there's something. But when we wrote it, it we didn't try to do that. Like yeah, it was, that makes sense. Though. So like yeah. it, so when like you write things that are heavy, they to to your heart, it it came across like this over the top. Mm. Yeah, I, I feel and I think we, we've talked about that uh, before, but there's the heaviness and music, but there's also other kinds of heaviness, like when mm -hmm. you're real and truthful with your lyrics, when you really feel it and it's totally. not like and, and, and it's OK if some bands go fictional, right? Like sure. it works for them. It's fine. But I feel like realness is another kind of heaviness. And mm -hmm. since you guys oh, yeah. had both um, without even people realizing it, I feel like there was this 
energy thing going on and and people try to explain it like every guest we have on the yeah, podcast we mentioned the energy live and i'm i'm a big uh, uh like i don't know how to explain it but like i keep bringing up that the energy mitch had on on the stage was like scary and un- unmatchable like mm-hmm. it's it's like unreal and i feel like this realness mm-hmm. like in the in the lyrics and he was putting himself out there and you guys were truly putting yourself out there mm-hmm. so that's why you can't explain it because there's no word you feel it like mm-hmm. w- would you would you say it's fair to, to to say it that way or yeah yeah of course yeah it's just that there's there's this energy to it we turn yeah we turn feelings into sounds like it was, it was more it was more feeling based as opposed to sound based these days it was just like the, that's, that this is what we feel about these are our feelings this is what we feel about the world and uh it sounds cool and then we shared it and then i think that's what just connected you know it's just it was real yeah and i think i think there's something too to and and it's like you know dudes actually jamming in the garage right like it's 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 not something we see often now at all you know and then couple that with you know the uh the early record like cleansing being kind of like live recorded stuff like that another thing that's like not super impressive too not something mm. that that bands do right but i think all those things kind of add to um that realness right totally. that rawness the just like totally. it's it's just you guys it's not this overproduced yeah. thing it's not this we're not we're not adding like uh, like bells and whistles to make this sound fucking cool or some shit it's just mm-hmm. it's you guys rocking the fuck out right yeah. i think there's like something to that for sure yeah and, and being being a uh, vulnerable cuz now it's kind of being accepted recently like 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 yeah. like, like rhythm guitar and rhythm based stuff where back then like playing a fucking 4-4 four, four riff this on zero and one and like we, we're vulnerable it's like i'm i'm here to fucking riff and show off like i'm here this is this is what i fucking feel like it's just mm-hmm. a place like, i stay down here i'm one to fucking two one zero two one zero chug chug and i that i, I at the time it was i guess it was a uh, it was being vulnerable i mean i wasn't hiding behind any notes is this- I'm I would I know it's going to be like a very difficult question to answer but like if you could pick out of anything you ever written like your favorite thing that the 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 riff or maybe the song you're most proud of could mm-hmm. could you pick or it's too hard I know the riff I'm most proud of it's the it's the intro for an, an answer that that blast beat is just it if it, oh, yeah. it still it pisses me off to this day like how did that fuck like riffs like that just fall out of the sky they just like like you can't sit down and write that for hours like you mm-hmm. just literally we walk in the garage it's the first thing that came out there's someone and someone did a blast beat i was like the fuck <laughs> this is it the fuck <laughs> And it's like it's and then like i won't name names but like every deathcore band pretty much tried to rip off that make yeah, make for sure make their own unanswered that oh the blast beat come out chug chug dun, 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 dun. But, I, I love i love a blast beat over a chug but you, for sure. you cannot <laughs> fuck with 210 210 mm-hmm. it's the most simple stupid caveman thing you can do and that riff fell out of the fucking sky and it pissed me off because i can't do it again <laughs> yeah. yeah it was like that I, I wanted to ask that as well like do you sometimes re, like when you're writing new stuff like does it do, do you go back to the very early stuff or you try mm. not listening to it so that you're not influenced uh i mean i i don't really know where to go with that that's it's kind of like what i said earlier like not be not being able to enjoy the death core resurgence really because it's a lot of shit behind the scenes i was so focused on like just keeping the damn band together um yeah i mean i'm i, I said it, i i've been public like i'm not really proud of like our past you know few records because i i just attached to like the to the emotional and business chaos but um lately i, I don't even remember what I've, I've been doing i've had my head up my ass I mean, really? I mean, well, for, for, Dude, what, for, what it, for what it's worth, Chris, the last album that you guys put out uh, last year is is to me feels a lot like a, a return to form of sorts in, mm-hmm. in terms in terms of sound. Yeah. Uh, and, and people can 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 argue whether that's a good thing or a bad thing sure. to, to each their own. Right. Sure. But I, I feel like there is some semblance of a there, there's this 
don't know. It, 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 there, there's that rawness that's there Got again it. that I feel maybe you guys were missing in the past few records that that's clearly coming out on this more recent stuff for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that 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 got close. Uh, what Taylor Young, the producer, did was um, he, I don't know, he, without knowing, I don't think he knows what he did, but he really helped when that record came out and he really helped squeeze out any last bit of ego or bullshit Sudasans had in our camp. And that went, that really manifested, it's still manifesting after that record came out. Like he really yeah. just a few things happened in the studio and like I think even maybe even my myself included there's still a few things we were dealing with and like he really helped squeeze out that last little bit we needed help with any bullshit any so that definitely helped us get a more clear head and I think that that really that, that record really kind of really helped things get more clear yeah just back to actually writing music and not yeah, thinking yeah. about the bullshit yeah like, yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah, not, not, not worried about losing thousands and thousands of dollars, you know, <laughs> you know, and egos <laughs> yeah. and all, all this still bullshit. And yeah. Yeah. I know. Yeah, I just, know it, just writing it, music. Exactly. Like, I know it's, it's e probably easy, uh, easier said than done, but like, it's, I feel like these album that you said were, were not exactly what you wanted to do was definitely part of the process. And it goes to, I could be totally. wrong, but I mentioned before that your connection with the band is what is a big part of your success. So mm -hmm. of course, when you lose someone and you go through things, the fact, mm -hmm. the fact that those albums were different, just, just proves the fact that you guys are real. In mm -hmm. my in my point of view, because mm -hmm. if you would have kept just your you completely fine, would have been almost almost strange. Because in sure. life you went through a lot of things. Even I would even argue we keep saying it. Deathcore was going like this for a while. It mm -hmm. was like art yeah, for a lot of events. So you 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 were taking hits and hits, and it was like mm -hmm. difficult. So seeing that in your records is a testament that you guys are real, and you put your real emotion in in your record. So I, totally. I just wanted to say that, like, that's how I view it personally. So mm -hmm. it's it's probably why you're still relevant today and people respect you guys so much as well. Like we, we've literally saw you guys going through all of that mm -hmm. and still be here. So it's, crazy. It's, it's part of the process. It's not a bad it thing. It, it, it was probably back then, like very difficult. But I mean, now today it was part of the process and it's something to be proud, I think. Thank personally. you. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, if any other band in the heavy genre went through half the shit, they would be gone. I guarantee you. For sure. I guarantee. There's just, there's just, there was so much shit. And then you have like the public stuff and the private is even worse. Like if you took any, any band, the, they, they would, they would be gone. Totally. Yeah. No, for, for sure. Um, and, and I was curious about that as well. I know you probably already talked about that, but did you have to kind of, you know, because when you, you change vocalists or when something happened and you have to have a, a new vocalist, people are very vocal about that, right? Mm -hmm. Like not yeah. to make a pound, but I mean, like people are talking about it and they're, um, did you have to kind of ignore that for a while? Did it get like, was it difficult to like go through those comments for like either fans or people like just talking? We know how it is in the community. Like people are very loud about those things. Like, mm -hmm. did you have to disconnect or you just went through it and you just like took it? Like, I'm just, if it's not too personal. To no, ask, no, like, no, uh, it's, just, it's not, it's not too personal. Uh, see, that was like the first step of really getting thick skin in the business. Like really like nothing really phases me anymore. Like it, that was like the first step. Cause at first I thought I was talking about this yesterday, actually with the, with, with Ernie, Ernie is actually in a chat, I think. Yeah. He's in the chat. <laughs> yeah. Um, Cause yeah, someone, I mean, I remember back in the day, like, like all like the news sites, people, friends were telling me, Hey, this is, it's all a joke. All the comments are just a joke. I, I won't, I won't see the news sites cause I don't want to give them any publicity. Uh, <laughs> People, oh, yeah, it's just a joke. Everyone's just being it's trolling, or like, or it's just a joke. It, it, people aren't serious. But then once something real happens in a tragedy, I was like, oh, this is not a joke, mm -hmm. and uh, it really made me. I don't take any comment seriously at all, positive or negative. Like it really, I guess I, 
I didn't ignore it completely, to be honest. I'll, I'll, I'll kind of pop, especially back then. I was, what, 27, 26, 27? Um, when that, that whole trash was going down, I was like, pop popping. I'm like, this is crazy. Like, and like things that, things obviously people won't say to my face ever, but like, why say stuff like that? Uh, right as though you'd never see it right people, no. people it's, that's always like the weird thing you'll, you'll the, weird. Uh, people will directly comment on your post and then you'll reply like, oh i didn't think you were gonna see it you're cool dude. like come on yeah. dude. uh which i i mean music is fine i mean uh, taste is fine or even me personally is fine but when it comes to, to tragedies mm -hmm. and it did it, it went down to I'm just a guitar player. I'm still just just a guitar player. I'm just a fucking kid from Corona, dude. And I, I lost my best friend. And there's yeah. there's people with opinions about it. So it, it was really hard to detach. I, I, the truth is, I'm in a deathcore band. I'm in a band. I'm a guitar player in a big band. That's just a reality that I can, maybe that kind of started that like disconnect, or it's just. To me, they were talking about my my best friend, and I was like, and then and then it's so disrespectful to even put words in his mouth. Still, oh, I Mitch would yeah. Mitch, Mitch would want this, the the rolling in his grave thing. Uh, Any that's fucking insane. You can't say things. Dude. I was like, like that. dude. I mean, I know that guy my my whole life, and even I wouldn't say anything like that. Like, how fucking dare all you? And I I hope they all don't listen to my band ever again. I don't I don't need your money. If you as said if you ever said anything in the comment section about Mitch, do not listen to my podcast. Do not listen to my band. I want nothing to fucking do with you. It was so as it was so disrespectful, and I'm kind of like remembering like, like the emotions now. Holy shit! I'm I'm, I'm also I'm also <laughs> I, I'm also drinking coffee. I'm pretty horned up right now. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we're here for it, dude. <laughs> it's it's it kind of started this like weird like uh, like you want to stay humble, you want to be relatable. But also, you got you got to take some big hits, like like emotional hits, and not care what people think about you. But then you meet people yeah. in person, uh, and you want to be relatable. It's just it, even to this day, like I I struggle with like like the humble thing, but also being relatable. But also, you have thick skin, and also it's I was just I was just talking about this with Ernie yesterday. It's it's a, it's an ongoing process. I for what it's worth though, like the the balance is probably always for for everyone the, the most difficult part. Um, but it seems to me that being real is the most important thing, and you totally. sure are. Like just with mm -hmm. your answers, you I, I think everybody can feel it. And mm -hmm. to me, that's the most relatable thing, right? Mm -hmm. Being real, even if yeah. sometimes you're wrong. If you're real, I mean. You know, you you can't. You have to, because and and yeah. at the end of the day, that's 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 all you have. Someone's gonna dislike you or like you for it's just that's just what's gonna happen, regardless of what you do. Right? So, even even if you try to be fake, you're still not gonna be enjoyed by everyone. Like totally. it's, it's a. And then you're, there's no way of winning that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and people honestly online are sometimes you think, oh, they won't go there. Like nobody's gonna. And and you're surprised. You're like, okay, they're gonna go there. Like people mm -hmm. can be. Uh, I'm, yeah. no, I'm not surprised by the yeah. internet I mean, anymore. <laughs> like, and, and and it was it was one of the things I was scared of when I started my channel, right? Like because I talk about real things and stuff. And I literally made a video that I said that in my personal opinion, you know, mm -hmm. Mitch is still like on match. And, and I was so scared of the of the comment. Fortunately, there was very few. But it's the first. That's the only times I was fighting with someone online i was Let's like go. that's the worst and everybody knows i'm like i won't come after you but you don't do that on a video that i'm paying respect or that i honor mm -hmm. someone don't don't you dare but people i feel like negative attention is so easy man it's so easy yeah man it for is. them so it's tough it's yeah, tough and it's, it's always the same thing hurt people hurt people you know yes. it's like mm -hmm. you know it's just Part easy it. they love those reactions right like so they it's yeah so i've learned i'm like Good. i'm i stop having expectations of oh people won't yeah they will they probably will mm -hmm. so yeah it's clear <laughs> oh yeah sir they'll they will de they will definitely go there wait, 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 which is fine but says i think there is a line you know there's a line yeah and that yeah. i've seen i 
you know, I've seen where the the line is. People, sh- I mean, that's kind of something that you need to deal with. Like, people should be able to say anything they want towards you, but that line when it comes to like some tragedies, you're like, fuck. Yeah. Like, any people can say whatever they want about me. I really don't care. Or music, I really don't give a fuck. But when it's like, but that one subject, I'm like, how do you even come up with that? It's weird. Like to me, it's even weird. I'm, it, my vision is like, who raised you? Like, I'm, I'm like, honestly, nobody. That's yeah, that's that's the I mean, problem. Probably <laughs> because so honestly, I I think you know just the way I've been raised, I didn't even think about going there. So there, mm-hmm. that says a lot about these people for sure. Like totally. it's 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 a strange place, the internet. It's tough, yeah, because there is there is so much positivity in it, but you really have to, you kind of have to fucking just not listen to anything. It's tough, dude. And that's a you know it's it's an ongoing thing. You know, got to really keep keep a, a distance, you know? Yeah, because that, I really wanted to ask you that because that it was going through my mind. I, I was seeing you guys going through stuff and I'm sure um, you too, right? Like mm-hmm. we, I think everybody, all your fans saw that and mm-hmm. we've seen the comments and I was like, oh my God, like, what is that? Like, how do they deal with that? Mm-hmm. Was my question as a super emotional person. I was like, how? I, so, I, so, I could tell you, you have, you, you have men, men, mental breakdowns. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, yeah, yeah, you, yeah. you literally lose your mind. You know, and um, yeah, yeah, it was it was a it was a fucking crazy uh, journey. It was it was nuts. But you're still here, so you know, and you're. Oh, I don't know. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> lucky, so close, so fucking lucky, dude. I want to leave this band so many times. It's, and I'm pretty sure other band members feel the same way. But yeah, it's that first brick, and we I guess it all kind of came down to we just loved, even Eddie. We loved his music. You know, he was uh-huh. he's in. Also, Parrish. So he's obviously earned his keep in in, in the death court scene. He's we love, yep, yep. we love this music. Yeah, That's it. The, he he broke the internet when he said that they would come back. Honestly, like to mm-hmm. be to be fair, like I think it literally broke. Like that I would great. only see that every everywhere. You know, like mm-hmm. it's they're really respected. Uh, they as are. A, like if I dare make a video about the top albums and All Shaw Parish is not there, mm-hmm. people come at me. They're like, "How dare you?" And I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm, "I'm I'm sorry. I, I picked five. They're but, the bro, yeah. geez, man. I remember. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was me, Mitch, Big." Josh and previous Susan Sounds members would go to showcase and watch Asha Parish play. We all bought the same fucking shirt. We were singing lyrics <laughs> like that. Like this is like this is pre Eddie. Like that that first yeah. that first fucking record. Dude, we were all in the front row, like singing Asha Parish lyrics with the all with, with 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 the fucking shirt, dude. We all we, we all got the, the fucking outfits. shirts. Like they were like re- they were really big for us, man. Yeah, I think it's it's fair to say they were pioneers, right? I think it's totally, just, totally, yeah, yeah, dude, yeah. totally. Yeah, Matt, uh, yeah. Matt, Matt, the drummer, uh, Ben, Ben, the guitar player, because they were kind of doing something that 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 we were doing. They're like they're they're putting in some some groove, some more simple. Well, now they're they, they've changed the music since then, but yeah, but, yeah. but but that first record I really love. It's like simple riffs, simple metal riffs. You have like some metal guys in the band with long hair, your head banging. I was like, oh, this is like a this is okay. You're you're like you're like the nor Cali version, you know. So so we yeah. had we, so we had like this kind of connection with them. I I love that first fucking record. And then Eddie came in, they got Chris Story, and they turned into like. Right. Really turned into like to Osha Parish, and I stopped listening. <laughs> <laughs> nothing against Eddie. Nothing against Eddie. It was just like, like the part I, I love. It's, it's all gone. It's all gone. It's all gone. I wasn't ready for it. It's perfect. I haven't listened to him since. Wow. Wow, that's so good. I wasn't. It, it, you said it so fluidly. Like it was perfect. Like the it was perfect. I love that. Dumb. Please clip that. Yes. No, but clip uh, it. yeah. Yeah, you need to. You really need to. I'll give you some more clips. So they're they're uh, there. We go. They're coming. <laughs> How? I mean, because I think a lot of a lot of the the early deathcore scene was was kind of like what you said, though. Like everyone was like a a, a version from where they were from of something similar, but because there was nothing to base themselves off of, everyone sounded. The, they all everyone had their own flavor of totally, deathcore so super early on right um and and yeah it's it's just so it's funny like you you would look at 
the bands that eventually all broke out and 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 got signed and stuff. You you guys were like the probably the first like deathcore band to sign to a major, right? Uh, I don't really remember the timeline. I do remember we were the uh, we were being uh, despised. Despised. I think despised signed to to Century like oh yeah, five something like that. But you guys were like early oh mm. six, and like it's and that, hard that, to say. You know, only few, only a few bands really like hit that threshold early on, and then there weren't really that many big signings moving forward. Mm-hmm. You know, like you had the White Chapel, Job for a Cowboy, you guys despised. I want to say Carnifex, even though, you know, the victory deal was a victory deal, but you know, yeah, was, sure. <laughs> those Poor were guys. like kind of like the, the yeah. all the big, all the big labels took one, at least like one or two deathcore bands, but that was it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it was like, yeah, we were, uh, the oddly enough, the first label to be interested in us was Roadrunner. Oh, yeah, we were yeah. close to signing a, this is like pre, this is, uh, this is a while ago. I mean, yeah. <sighs> Well, shout out to Mike Gator, which we still hang out to this day. I mean, I see him at all, all the shows here, but yeah, they were, he got one of it. Like, right, holy shit, it's Roadrunner. Like, this is fucking yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah. And then that, at that time, we we're talking to a prosthetic, Central Media, Metal Blade was kind of popping in. Um, so yeah, it, was, it was kind of happening at once. So we, uh, crazy pre cleansing, right? Oh, yeah, that's, which, that's pre, which is like, that's pre yeah. pre record. And then we, we had a we tried out I don't know what auditioned I don't know what we was what we yeah what, the showcase yeah stuff. we oh, we, no. we showcased for prosthetic in our garage so we we played a show in our garage <laughs> like we rocked out and he just sat there that's so cool <laughs> yeah that's so funny that's, I oh mean my it, it was worth it because he took us out for for hamburgers yeah. after and he, he said later on that he didn't see the potential oh great um we we played in la i forgot what show it was but he probably hates himself to this probably. day right? probably no, no. <laughs> it's, 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 it's impossible to tell it's impossible to tell and um there's a show which now people will freak out over but back then it was like every band played in la it was like what was the key club or something in hollywood but uh us all Parish, animosity job for a cowboy like you name it they were they were we would put yeah. this la show and what's cool about me even still being me like i'll go in a crowd no one knows who the fuck i am i'm not mitch so mm-hmm. i remember standing behind the reps of metal blade and saying i like <laughs> i like i like job i, I, I like job for a cowboy i mean like if they were right in front of me i was like oh i guess when i signed to, to metal blade i guess i guess they're gonna take job for a cowboy and then Later on, found out should have you should have slipped them some subliminal messages. Nah. Oh, suicide Silence is so good. <laughs> but you, I just saw Suicide Silence and that band fucking behind sucked. The guys. <laughs> no, there it was. <laughs> no, current current me would be like, man, Suicide Silence fucking sucked. They were holy shit. No, no. But uh, yeah, and then Roadrunner didn't go through because uh, they same thing. They maybe at the time it was too crazy. I I don't know. But Century, mm-hmm. yeah, they. <laughs> They they somehow got it. I think because what what happened with Century Media is um, they missed the boat with Metalcore, and they didn't want and they didn't want to happen again. So once Deathcore thing came out, they didn't question anything. They, just, they were in early. They, they were started, like, "We're not fucking around." Yeah, they yeah. saw they saw us. Well, no, no, signed them. So we're just signed Suicide, and then they signed uh, Once a Plague, and they just took. They went. They yeah. learned from like the Kill Switch Engage like kind of error. Like, okay, we can't miss out on any kind of core coming Learn out from their mistakes yeah so, so they signed us probably without even knowing what was going to happen and then yeah it, what what uh what happened happened i'm so yeah, high on caffeine right now it is fucking crazy Honestly, <laughs> dude, I, I can feel you so much right now because usually i take one coffee i think it's my fort one and i can hear my heartbeat dude, right i now. don't what am I doing? I'm on I'm, I'm on YouTube right now. I can't. I, I got a fucking at cool comment collected. Dude, it's perfect. <laughs> I love your the, the energy right now cool. is, is is perfect. Uh, I'm and horned you up, were talking dude. about <laughs> you were talking about labels, and mm-hmm. as I was doing my video, I recall like I've seen some interviews. I think it was with Mark and and Mitch. I could be wrong, mm-hmm. but you guys were saying how well Century was treating you. Yeah, like, literally in an interview, the yeah. Century Media. I, I mean, yeah, sure, probably yeah, that's no, some, no, no, some no, stuff they, happened, but yeah, they were. and it's one of the as i'm making videos i think i did 40 documentaries kind of videos it's the only time i ever heard somebody saying that their record label was treating them well like i mm-hmm. i heard the video and i was like 
finally they're they see, like people were you know they were happy with their their label mm -hmm. and there's the reason why i bring up that is as i'm as i was talking with other bands other big bands a lot of them told me that you guys were giving good advice or on which band to sign and stuff and, and you know which label to to get signed do you recall that because i heard many times yeah mitch told me not to to, to sign this deal or this mm -hmm. deal like not to get too controversial no. but i'm just curious if you remember that it was a thing for you guys to look you look out for other bands like do you remember that yeah it's a long time but yeah w w what was the question the long one the question is do you recall you know it was it important for you to look out for your peers in, in the scene or upcoming oh, bands oh, yeah, and stuff yeah. like that yeah um kind of but no one fucking li listens to us <laughs> still yeah, I mean, yeah still man i we we try so hard not to be dads because we're like the older you know <laughs> I'm like I'm, I'll be around Lorna Shore on that one tour. I'm like I don't say shit to him. I was like, um, <laughs> you fucking you you learn you fucking learn your, the way the way you fucking learn. Uh, uh, but, hey, they can ask for advice. They can come to you if they want. Maybe, right? Yeah, people don't ask for advice. Yeah, <laughs> people ask. It took me a career to learn how to ask questions. It's just yeah, but uh, I know Mitch was at, at, at the time. It's hard for me to say because Mitch was the one. And Mark that were more social. So I okay. I really don't know. Like I, I didn't say shit back then, but I know Mitch and Mark were out there a lot. You know, talk, talking to bands. I mean, how you bands. became the podcaster yeah. out, of, out of the bunch. I had to. <laughs> I, it's it's I yeah, I, I mean again, I was just uh this this things that you're forced into and then um sometimes you you gotta, you gotta say fuck it, you know, and I I wanted I wanted to do the podcast and then I I just just like suicide songs, I just dove into it and I didn't waver the vision. The the best part of it is that you're the guy doing the podcast, but every time I watch it, you can tell that your guests are honored. Like they're like, mm -hmm. I can't believe I'm here with Chris from Suicide. So it's so funny. Usually mm -hmm. the podcasters are a little bit like, uh, you know, without dissing us, you 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 know, me and Dom basically, you know, just mm -hmm. fans of the scene. Cool. But you it's have cool. been a part of it since forever. So I, I mm -hmm. can tell your guests are like. Oh my god we're here and it's i don't know i think cool. it's super wholesome to see like i've definitely noticed that yeah it's 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 dope man it is a kind of like a trip to like to always hear the bands you know show their their respect and and we line up i said it's not expected like we little we've we've taken more risks and sacrificed more than all the bands and we deserve all the credit that 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 we get we learn every we've earned every bit of it for for sure like i think the right words would be like paved the way right like mm -hmm. for so many bands like deathcore mm -hmm. wouldn't be probably not even be here but at least not be what it is mm -hmm. if if you guys were not there so there yeah yeah it's just yeah I, I, it's cool to be like a part of that but uh you know try not try not to like live in it you know this is yeah. um, we, we haven't even like started yet and uh I was, I was gonna say something, but then uh, my uh, my sense came to me. Maybe, maybe like, <laughs> maybe, maybe when I'm 50, I'll, I'll go full on Cat Williams. But uh, this is, <laughs> I mean, you probably like assume what what I'm I'm, I'm talking about. I mean, mm -hmm. it's 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 very cool when when uh, when the bands give give us props. It is it is pretty cool. And, I don't know. It's yeah, yeah, and, and I, I guess going back to the podcast, it's just like I, unfortunately, unfortunately, I lived all. I have all these experiences. It's yeah. we we've uh, we know what it's like to get fucked over. We know what it's like to lose all our money. We know what it's like to have tragedies. Um, we know what, like what it's like to start a band from nothing and go to an arena. We I kind of. Without trying, like I, I have all the experiences. I, I lived it, so I could kind of talk to anybody. And it's and the older bands, like like the younger bands, and get it and listen. And also, I, I've been quiet. My, you know, as you as you were saying, Jan, like there was when you look back at old interviews, all you see is Mitch and Mark. You know, I was I was very mute. And yeah, unfortunately, like you, you like you can't plan for a tragedy. So once like the face of the band's gone. Uh, no one knew shit about suicide songs. 
no one knew anything mm-hmm. uh even like and the stuff right now is just it's just not accurate i'm like fuck so and so yeah i'm i'm was i was forced into this position where i gotta tell the story so these people kind of know what's like going on uh so hence you know start a podcast i do any podcast i can do i can do any interview i can do just retell the story over and over again probably till i die i said all mm-hmm. I, I, was, I was all all these years wait all these years wasted I, I mean, sucks. No, <laughs> you you mean wasted by uh, wasted by like not not talking? You mean or yeah. like not speaking up? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that yeah. Me and Mitch not hanging out and doing an interview. It's like shit. Do we? Ugh. Yeah, I try not not to dwell on, on where where we could have taken it, but now it's just I do podcasts like like this. You know, just gotta tell retell a story. You know, again, yeah. again, and again. I think it's important, though. I think mm. these informations are the most important thing. Like knowing what the bands are going through and stuff. Like that's the mm-hmm. that's the reason why I did my channel. Basically, is cool. I'm like, I when I was I keep saying that, and and Dumb knows what I'm gonna say already. But like when I was 15, in my mind, all the deathcore bands were like millionaires. I'm like, oh my god, they made <laughs> it. They signed. They're millionaires. Yeah. And and manager was and then yeah i i made some research and i was like what mm-hmm. like they were living in their van they went through this and this mm-hmm. so to me it's very important that people knows the behind the scenes right like totally. it's very important to know totally. um so it's good that you're, that you're doing that mm-hmm. and it, it must have been nerve-wracking at first right going f- being from introverted and just you know very reserved and then mm-hmm. you, you start a freaking podcast where you like can i ask if you were extremely yeah. nervous the first of time course. Or, or... of course i mean i spent years prior to the podcast working on my stutter which i got a pretty good hold of it and then the camera thing brought it, brought it back. I was like, oh shit, oh, I, no I, I, I gotta fucking deal with this thing again because now I was more nervous. And then uh, I, I I fixed it, but then it kind of weird. I mean, I, ha- I have a good problem where like, you when you stutter, it's because you're nervous and, and, and your brain is going faster than, than you actually saying the words. But, but what happened now, I still struggle with it. Now I'm excited. Now I'm like, <laughs> now I'm confident in myself. I'm now I'm like, I don't really give a fuck about in anything or anybody. So now I'm like, oh, wait, I'm excited out at the podcast. Now I'm like holding back. Oh shit. Like I'm not nervous anymore. It's like, I'm excited. I want to see all these things. My brain's like, it's going like this. Oh shit. But, but uh, yeah, but back then it was the first few episodes were really, really tough. And, and there's also a whole other element where like, once I was getting over like the nervousness, there was the business aspect of it is hard. Like I still haven't made any money. I'm in debt. Yeah. I'm in debt with this podcast. And I, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, it's been over three years. So, it, so, t- so to pay rent, this is our s- third spot to pay rent. I was eating top ramen every fucking day. So yeah. I, I can't, I, it's so hard to watch an interview from even last year because I could just see and hear my brain just like, I'm barely there. I'm just trying to pay the fucking rent. I'm eating because like, top ramen works when you're in your 20s and you're in your teens. Mm-hmm. And But when you're mid 30s, dude, I and like the job requires you to focus, like trying to get through all those podcasts were really hard to, just to, just so I, I, I could pay Zach the kid and, and I could pay rent because i because I'm, I'm i'm in california it's like so there's that and yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah. It's, uh, i'm still i'm still going through it and yeah and there's the convenience of being close to the venues and all that mm-hmm. stuff too right like it's, yeah. it's not like you could just do it like somewhere cheaper elsewhere yeah. like that's not an option for you that doesn't work with the concept right? we are we are in california baby but, yeah. but you know what it's like <laughs> it's exactly like suicide i'm playing the long game i'm also yeah. i'm very picky uh who i hang out with around here and you could kind of use your imagination. I'm around LA. I'm mm-hmm. in Hollywood. So yeah. uh the podcast has really taught me behind the scenes stuff of business. Like uh I definitely have a harder time trusting people and I'm really conscious of uh yeah, where where I go, who I hang out with, uh I don't I don't suck anyone's dick. I don't kiss any ass. Uh, I've lost all that podcast guests because someone else has probably done that. Um, 
So mm-hmm. it's just I don't I don't I don't do that. I'm playing up just like Suzanne's. I'm playing like at the long game. This because you know because at the end of the day, you just gotta be yourself, and you, you have you have to love it. You have to be obsessed with it because the, you know. It's, yes, yeah, Suzanne's didn't make it didn't, didn't make a dime for years. Years. It's wild though. Years. We 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 were in debt forty grand twice. It's going trying to go on tour and this years in. Being 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 the fucking face of a genre, like no money. There's nothing. Yeah. For, uh, peop- for people watching uh, just while we're here um, what's the best way to support the podcast is it mm. merch and stuff like what would you say is the best <laughs> let's say like I love your podcast what can I do to, cool. to support the most yeah. I think the best way is um, so we, we haven't announced it yet it, it is there but we haven't announced it yet because we're working out some kinks but if you want to sign up for like the YouTube membership that's there Um, we're about to launch merch. Let's see, we're in May. I say late May, we'll we'll, we'll have merch up. Uh, anyone that w- supports the sponsors, that does help. It does. Because mm-hmm. the affiliate links. Yeah, like any like link or any like because yeah. um the codes or whatever. Totally. Yeah. I mean that. I mean that fucking pays for this. I mean the sponsors do. They they help keep the lights on. You have cool and, uh, sponsors too, like big sponsors. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, they're... like ESP, and it's mm-hmm. it's it's. I'm asking that because you know, like that's basically the whole reason me and Dumb are even doing this. Like it's mm-hmm. time to, you know, like build a community who wants to give back and totally. Want Wants to support, and mm-hmm. I think we need to talk about those. There's nothing wrong with bringing up the best way to support. Mm-hmm. You know, on the, on the opposite, I, I want to know about these that. things, <laughs> and yeah, it's it's very important. Mm-hmm. And I remember the bands telling me when I, w- I, I would go to show and I would buy merch. And I was people mm-hmm. would be like, "That's the best way to to support her band," and it yeah. stick to me. And I was like, "I'm going to keep buying merch." It is. So I, I was wondering for mm-hmm. your your podcast. Um, mm-hmm. By the way, I, I did buy a shirt. You're Remember that you did a tie dye purple oh, yeah, shirt. Yeah. I, ha- I I have this one, but like it's it's important to do these things. Appreciate and that. And people who can't support, it's one thing. But I feel like out there, there's a lot of people who genuinely wants to support. That's cool, you know. So it's important to put it out there. I think. Thank you. Yeah, it took me a long time to kind of literally. So I almost quit the podcast in February. Um, I mean, that's that's my that mindset's officially dead. I mean, it took me a long time to kind of yeah. grasp it. I feel like we this is May 1st, holy shit. Uh, April mm-hmm. was the first time I felt any kind of grasp on it or like or like the workload because just to have the podcast come out weekly, I've ignored everything else to be honest. Like, um, uh, yeah. treating it like like a business or like I just had. We started posting clips literally last week. It, it's like so. Finally, we're like, I have a, you know, I my my team has really come together like at the past month. Like really learned to keep it going, and we're, we're probably gonna start executing a lot more and better uh, in May. But unfortunately, yeah, I really haven't. My my dumbass hasn't really focused on the business side of uh of, of the podcast. I've been so focused on getting the guests and make sure that uh, they're they're consistent because I treat the podcast like like music you know i'm a fan of podcasts i i i expect that shit to pop up every fucking week consistently yep. i know i know what it is so i, I know i know that feeling so i, I try to do, do like do like the same thing where I, they, they know for sure if they're gonna tune in monday it's gonna be an in-person fu- fucking podcast every fuck, fucking monday and there's been fuck i don't i don't know yeah there's been so many things that happened that like made it to where it's not gonna happen but You know, still, 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 bring Ernie in and do, do still, a show instead. It's still and, there. You know, like, it's still make it work. You know, yeah. I mean, I'm, every fucking week. And also just, just to prove to myself, you know, it, uh, April was a big month for me, like as far as mentally and emotionally. That's probably going to start manifesting probably this month in May, where it's just keeping things going, learning, learning like, like the business and also balancing the podcast with Sudasans. Cause, cause yeah. I'm doing both, both at the same time, and and they're both. It's like it's like uh, right now. It's like they're both at 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 the hospital. I I, <laughs> I brought I brought Susan's back from the dead a few times. Mm-hmm. Uh, more more than once, the band was dead. Like fucking. I, what's I I keep forgetting that fucking word. Uh, defibrillator. 
Like that, yeah. that, that makes sense. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> we we should not be here. Like we should not. But I don't, something kept us going, and I literally brought that shit back back from the dead, and I made some. I guess now I'm making less mistakes. I've been making like it took me a while to switch over to the business mind and be kind of ruthless. And a lot of any ruthless decision I made has made the music better. It's made my, my guys happy, which is that's my main priority. My main priority is my is my girlfriend and and those fucking four guys. If this may make sure shit is just lines up and to, to balance two things that are like impossible to build, it's it's but it has driven me nutty. Nutty. But now I feel like April, I felt like a, a good grasp of it. So I'm I'm, I'm really excited how May's May's gonna look and and uh, and a month after I I feel also like it can be um, inspirational. Is that a word? What's mm -hmm. the word to mm -hmm. say that? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm. Yeah. My my French is coming up. Uh, yeah. It's <laughs> like. It, I, I think it is for a lot of people because you mentioned that back and, and I saw it when I was bending the video. I was watching at your studio updates and you were mm. very quiet, like more like yeah, man. focused, like not mm. talking too much of the camera. Mm -hmm. People were even trying to put you in the camera and you were yeah. just like, you know, yeah. and to see that now you it, it really feels like you took a lot on your shoulders. Right. Mm. So I think it it can show people that like no excuses, like if you have no, to step stop. up your game, you, you can to. do it. You know, if you have to, you you can. Like, I think yeah. it's there's. I think it's a statement totally uh, in itself. So that's cool. Thank you. Yeah, we all have a, a large capacity to handle pressure. We 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 all have it. You know, you just gotta fucking dig deep. You dig. I, I'm still digging. You gotta. I think. I think humans. We uh we we forget like our capacity to handle pressure and you know bad days. You know, we, we our, our 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 capacity is there. We fucking just just fucking dig, man. Yep, that's true. That's very true. Mm. All right, I'm done. I'm done. What? I'm done ranting. I'm trying to control this caffeine. Dude, you're saying that, but like, yeah. I can't stop. <laughs> I can't we're, stop. We're, we're, just, we're, on, we're on a we're on a podcast. That's cool. kind of what kind of what we do. <laughs> because I'm so emotional, emotional and talkative that sometimes I'm like, oh my god, like dumb. Because dumb has so many like great questions, and and then mm. I'm like, oh my god, I just rented emotionally for almost an hour. So Let's like go. sometimes I'm like being mindful. And I'm like just just stop for mm. a second, mm. you know? Hell yeah, hell yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so Dom's got some questions. Then let's, let's do go. it. Let's, let's do go. it. Let's go. Let, let's uh, let's go back in time uh, uh, again. Let's talk about um, let's talk about the the Golden Gods performance. Mm -hmm. How was that for you guys? How uh, and how hot were you in that suit? Oh, oh my god! Also, worst idea we fucking ever had in our in our, in our career. <laughs> I forgot who said it, but what a fucking stupid idea! That that shit sucks. <laughs> Any band that gets dressed before a show, I I mad mad respect for him. I mean, it, it was that, but uh, yeah, I, I forgot who said it, but uh, yeah, that I mean, obviously, it, it looked. I'm pretty sure it looked great on film, but uh, yeah, doing that show fucking. I mean, blew it's, ass. it made for an iconic YouTube video iconic, for what yeah. it's worth, but yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it was cool. Yeah, it was a that was a crazy experience because we. Uh, that, that was a fly-in show. We were already on tour, mm -hmm. flew in for Bamboozle. Uh, we, shared a, we, we shared a stage with fucking 50 Cent. It was a, So that was like, Bamboozle was the first time, uh, like, they were the one, that, that was the festival that was really testing heavy deathcore and putting it onto like these, you know, like a mainstream festival type yeah thing. we were like we were the guinea pigs for a lot of stuff like uh slayer with uh, i mean the, the fucking is that right there that that yeah that that might have been tour uh slipmont took, took us out in 2008 on a mayhem tour it was, we were just we were just being thrown in 2008 2009 you guys did the wildest it fucking tours with all these it, big crazy. ass fucking bands crazy was, lineups and and no, I don't, not many other deathcore bands have done it since either. Like it, it, it mm -hmm. was kind of like you guys and no one else. We were we were the guinea pigs, and then uh, once like it was, well, we get on a mayhem, it works obviously. Okay, so in the next year they bring on like a white chapel or something, or uh, and uh, yeah, it was us and J Fact just. 
yeah. waving the flag, uh, putting it, uh, putting this music that shouldn't work in arenas, but it was working. Mm. And well, even JFAC mm-hmm. was kind of like they would do like a Cannibal Corpse tour, which was fucking huge. Everyone was like mm-hmm. mind blown that that was a thing, and you guys did that too. But mm-hmm. uh, but they weren't really doing like they weren't going out with with corn, mm-hmm. you know. They weren't yeah. doing Slipknot type stuff like that. Mm-hmm. That's another level, right? That's like it's, a. It's nuts. That that's why uh, it's it's uh, what's been helping else. Sometimes I mean through our tragedy and our that record. Now we're kind of coming back behind the scenes because we still science is, is why i said there's a disconnect between us and in a new era deathcore where we have no hype but there's a lot of people at the shows so where are the other people coming from mm-hmm. and uh and we're so that that's connecting and we're really connecting on these radio festivals again and i okay. i could only i could only uh just pinpoint to just the energy like if you, if you yeah. like if there's a ton of fucking people out there and you see like a a bunch of maniacs with long hair going crazy and and those riffs have they just i guess they they withstand it like the time i mean they something about the simplicity too i think it's right just goes. like it's not being completely over the top in terms of like shredding and all that you, it, someone who doesn't listen to it can understand what's going on and understand the heaviness it's it's been going on yeah there's like this undeniable but that's also one thing with uh so it sounds we always had we, since day one this primal we've always been a primal band it's never been about technical it's like it's like i i've always wanted to access like the reptilian part of, of humans like it's just like it's when we go up there you're you're going to move if you're if you're yeah. like if you're hardcore dancing or you're moshing or you're drunk or you're you're the eight thousand person in, in the back of a festival you're there's something about suicides that's very primal and you're, and you're going to bang your head and you're going to move i think that i think True. that's cool the 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 because like, you get you guys were doing a lot of those more like the 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 mayhems and, mm-hmm. and the big like rock festivals and stuff like that and i i don't think I, I think it's kind of an underrated thing being able to be a part of those lineups mm-hmm. and actually have have a crowd uh rock out to you guys even if they don't know you mm-hmm. uh I, I don't think a lot of deathcore bands have that like can do that you know i i think that's a pretty particular mm-hmm. particular thing yeah i think there's like a subset of bands that are like festival bands like you know mm-hmm. they work on festival bills like guar is a festival band mm-hmm. like because they're entertaining there's like mm-hmm. there's like something about like every band that's able to do these things that has a mm-hmm. wider appeal than just the mm-hmm. the genre they play totally you know? you know who else has that is uh is slaughter slaughter to to prevail like absolutely alex sings from his fucking bones he sings from yeah he doesn't sing with technique and i i could tell He's just, I don't mm. think he's human. I think no. He's- <laughs> like say I say what you want about him, but I I respect Slaughter probably at at at, at the highest level because they kind of remind me of like I guess us and then we're where it's just a, it's a, it's more energy based. I'm not saying we. You said primal. That's like just, the perfect example of primal. Alex is a fucking primal guy, and like when they play a festival, like I I I'm like oh shit okay this is their father. this is sick and I the way I the way just the way he's moving like. He's singing from someone somewhere else, and that's what Deathcore mm. has been about since day one. That everyone kind of missed. He's, yeah, he's, yeah, yeah. he's singing from a, a dark place because that because that's where I go, and I know that that that's that, that was the essence of Deathcore that no one really got. Like they mm. they like they listened to the, the cleansing, and no one copied it. No no one knew how to do it. It was just like True. this. It was like this primal thing, and then they took it and like they made it technical. I'm like. I was like, how do you, how do you take that and then make this? It's never been about technical or like yeah. p- perfect production. I mean, it's just kind of it took a while for it. Now it's like coming back, which is kind of crazy. Yeah, but it's always been a primal. Always been primal. Do a you lot s- of young bands doing the, doing that sort of thing, and mm-hmm. there's I think a uh, a youthful ignorance to it. They're mm-hmm. they're attracted to that that raw like energy. Uh, mm-hmm. I, think, I think all those things that appealed, like what made Deathcore appealing back in the day sure. that we kind of lost over the years. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of young kids right now within this resurgence of Deathcore mm-hmm. are gravitating towards that. And crazy. they're like, they're talking about, they're it's not so talking crazy. about, they're not even talking about the cleansing. They're talking about the demos. 
so right? Like, and, and there's like that, that it's so I don't know, it's, it's so, it's so cool to see though, it's man. Cool. I'm here for it. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. It's why like you can't, like you can't make music to like follow trance or even I, I'm doing the same thing with the podcast. So you can't go off hyper trance because it, it, it's going to pass. It's going to pass. Yeah. And then you just kind of hope things come back around. And I guess when, when, when you're yourself, things come back around and we've kind of been lucky to be somewhat a part of like the second and it's going to be another wave of deathcore you know it's just yeah. it's, it's just when, when, when i thought it was done these bands keep coming up like uh <laughs> remember, remember someone showed me a tactosa i was like what the fuck this is crazy yeah. where, where am i is that mitch mm-hmm. like it was and all, all these bands that keep popping up now i'm like okay this isn't this isn't done and there's there's a pardon me another wave that I'm not even gonna expect, and this it's this got to be here for it. And I'm lucky, I'm lucky that I was myself since day one. That's that, that's the only reason why I'm still here. It's and the trends come and go, and they come back again. Well, well, we're we're still here. Still here. We'll, you know, ride, we'll ride the second wave. Yeah, yeah still <laughs> that's here. It. And also, uh, the, also uh, the other key is being hungry as fuck. And yeah. unfortunately, uh, when we, we I'll, I'll close off the, the, the caffeine rant is, uh, <laughs> you're good, dude. I, we love the caffeine. Uh, we dude, love I, the rant, dude. I, so. I might have ruined this podcast. I, I, I apologize. <laughs> oh, dude, come on. I'm usually <laughs> no, very no. Like, cool, calm, and collected, but I am horned up right now. <laughs> you can't be worse than me. It's impossible. This I'm telling you right now. Oh, yeah, no, no, yeah, no, no, for, for real. For what it's worth, our audi- our specific audience, they're used to this. Okay. You're good. Dude, like, I'm going to try to close the mic. I'm like, dude. <laughs> dude, I've prepared them. Okay, I've good. I've prepared like, them. Cool. You're all good. Uh, yeah. Cool, cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm so fucking horned up. I'm loving this. Like, to be honest, like, and I know I can tell Dumb is smiling the whole time. He, he don't. He, he's mm-hmm. not always smiling, and now he's been always no. smiling. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Good, no, good. but for real, we do appreciate that, and I'm having a blast right now. Dude, Sick. everything, like, it's, it's awesome. So, Cool. You got this. All right, it's, cool. It's perfect. All right, then I'll, I'll work on making this one really short. So, uh, obviously, always be yourself and you, but also the other key, which uh, you have to be fucking hungry. And when we did that self title with, with with Ross Robinson, uh, I asked him a question like, you know, what like what would it take for like a band like Corn to like oh a band like that to like game back that fucking thing that made him that and he, I will never fucking forget he said give it all away and without without consciously knowing that's what we did we threw it all away all our past past success everything we threw it every everything we threw it away I took I took his advice you know I because I trusted him and we've been broke for I don't know how many years and it but what it's done it's made me it's brought me back to that that child that used to play death corn in my room in front of nobody on top of dino sheets you know it's like it's turning me back into that kid i the money like it, it really clouded a, a lot a lot of things when, when 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 it came and then i took its advice and i'm i'm hungrier than ever and that's only yeah. unfortunately i don't have i i only go by my experience i don't i don't know shit people can say my band sucks but what you what what no one could ever take away from me ever is my experiences like i this is i lived i lived this and this is what happened so I, i'll share it so in my experience the only way we could get back to who we are is we took our money and we put it in the trash <laughs> name one deathcore band that will do that I guarantee you, yeah. they will fucking scatter. They'll fucking sit here and talk all day how how they're, they're, they're the new biggest deathcore band ever and they're, they're on, on covers now. By guarantee, fucking to you, if she came down to it, they will not do it. We we did, and why? Because I lo- I love I love this music. I'm like, how can I get back to myself and bring Susan Sounds back? And we threw away our money, and I didn't expect it to take this long. To yeah. let to come back, but it's what it's just that love, that love for for the deathcore scene and the, our, the style of music is what really kept us here. And it took me a long, long, long time. It took it's fuck two, three records to really kind of strip away the bullshit and uh, yeah. lose lose the cash. And um, that's the only way I know how to get back to that fucking starving kid that like. 
That's the only way I know. It's lose. Well, I, it's, it's I heard lose you talk, everything. I think, uh, th- I think I think I heard you talk a little bit of also about like the the new wave of of deathcore kind of like lighting a fire on your under your ass as well. Oh, totally. Right? Like the, yeah, totally. And and you know and 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 when, when you're broke and I have the podcast, it's really kind of forced me to like, okay, I'll I'll, I'll hang out with this band for an hour and a half, and then I'll go see them live either the day before or the day of. And what mm-hmm. it's done is uh is it's helped me stay hungry, and it's also forced me to be. I, I just know what's going on now. Me, me and Ernie, our drummer, go to all the shows, all of yeah. them. And it's not it's not about the shows you, you want to go to. It's about the shows you don't want to go to. And it's mm. just there's some there's something about that that's also brought like a, a hunger. All shit, like I can't I can't suck anymore. Like everyone rips, everybody rips, everyone everything. Yeah, the, the, sta- the standard's gotten higher right, now. Right? There's the like standard. a certain expectation now. Yeah. <laughs> standard is insane. Like it's not like us, you know, being in a garage and we're like there's only a few deathcore bands on the planet. This is like there's bands everywhere and they're all sick. I I want to be sick too. So it's, I mean, uh I've just I'm just seeing all these bands, all kinds of music constantly. And um it's uh, again I I always go back to February but um it's hard to slowly to slowly come back to where now uh, like this past two months I, I'm, I'm walking around my house and those rips are coming back in my head those those like mm. that the uh, I've been yeah, fucking that, that, I, that, that I, hunger to, to write music yeah. and the inspiration I've been, I've been fucking fighting for the past three or four years to get those rips in my head again and and they're slowly coming back, and uh, it's that like the, the fucking like the the old the OG deathcore sound. Now I'm just walking around my house, and yeah. it's just like it's just going in my head now. I'm like, oh shit! It's just like now like That's what we want. now now I'm walking around. My <laughs> That's so house. dude. Crazy. That is so cool to hear though. It's crazy. Like, like on like crazy. Reg- regardless of like like who we are, who you are, like on a, on a person to person level. That that's such a cool thing to hear, you yes. know. Someone getting that inspiration yes. back, like Took a the, while, man. that's something that that you feel has been missing, you know. And mm-hmm. to to be able to tap into that, like that totally. must be such a beautiful thing for you. It's 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 pretty much been everything, you know. I, I want to be here with my band and, and and to support my mom and dad. They've they've had, you know, it like Suicide Silence is the Lucker and Garza family. That like, this goes beyond me and Mitch, like our families have sacrificed for this fucking thing. And uh, mm. I was, I remember, yeah, I was, I was talking about this yesterday too. Like my family has sacrificed so much. The Garza's have sacrificed so much to keep this thing alive. Like there's no, there's no way I'm going to let this thing die. Like, Dude, you have the coolest parents I've ever seen in my entire life. Like, <laughs> very, on, very, very lucky. I'm very lucky. We, we all owe them. Yeah. <laughs> very, very lucky incredible like i'm trying to make my parents listen to what I, to what i do like my mom is watching my videos and i know she's probably skipping the music and already that I, re- I can understand right but cool. like you guys were literally practicing there always and stuff mm-hmm. like that and i, I don't i yeah, think man. it's so freaking cool like i think they're part like they're clearly part of your success right totally like to, totally so totally it's they are man yeah it's when so yeah when you have you know when you have nothing you know you have you have your your family and 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 the friends that are, are friends with you because they they just like you as a person you know that I wouldn't you know all, all the friends I had when I was nobody I'm they're my friends now when because because when when you're not the hype band anymore and you lose all your money the people fucking they're gone they're fucking gone dude uh, so I had this. Uh, and this took me a long time to learn too as well like uh sometimes i would talk to people uh p- people in bands or maybe people in the business or our shows and I, I would feel like this disconnect and i felt like am i am i being an asshole like was this i'm trying to like connect this person but then it, it hit me like like being like six months ago i'm like there, there's something fake and I don't know what it is and I don't like bullshit. My taunts are bullshit. It's just like, it's at zero. It's, it's, right. it's, it's that nature. Now you're recognizing it. It's like, oh, yeah. like if, if I say something that's like, that will be, I guess I just naturally think these things. Oh, hey, do this, do that. Oh, you want me to be you. This, 
there's something that there's a bull, I have a bullshit meter that I guess I've developed with dealing with the bullshit with Suasans and the and growing the podcast. I've kind of developed this bullshit meter. It's it's kind of nuts, and I'm like, oh, that's what that is. So I've accepted how to communicate with people more. I'm like, okay, I kind of know, I I understand what kind of things are at at, uh, at shows and uh. You know, I, there's yeah, there's quite a few people. I don't, I kind of, I keep at a distance, and there's uh, right. You you know how to deal with it now, right? Kinda, like if you get a signal, kinda. you know what to do with it. You might be like, okay, kinda. maybe maybe we won't take this too far, type thing. <laughs> kind of, man. Yeah, this. Yeah. yeah, it's all it's it's all like this human like lexicology shit, dude. Like it, just, I, yeah. I, I, I wish it was about the music, but it's not. It's just there's so much. There's so much other stuff around it where I, unfortunately, it's me that has to be involved with all that stuff to keep uh, the band alive and that podcast alive. It's just, I kind of, I kind of had to step up and, you know, I didn't read my first contract until 35, you know, oh, Jesus Christ, fucking, okay. signs, wow. fucking signing shit and all oh, there, there we go. Cool. Oh, mm-hmm. where's, where's my money? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah, I remember my first contract at 35. So, um, now, another reason why the guys I think are still are still here, like I've been, I took the burden, I took, a, I, I've accepted the role, and I said I, I put myself looking at budgets and the business and trying to keep the band going, and um, I've been very very uh, transparent. I told them good news, I told them bad news. You know, if yeah. I think people people appreciate when you don't bullshit, you know, then, sure. it, then it, it brings people together. It's just like if he because if you keep no one likes to be bullshitted, no, you know. Dude. Like we can, you I know, st- people try to save it. face and shit. But come on, just say it how it is. I it's smell chill, it like. now, dude. I yeah. can smell it now. It is bizarre. Mm. It is. It's a good thing, though. It's. Cr- I, I don't know what it is, man. It, unfortunately, that comes with age. Too. I'm thirty. I'm thirty eight. So yeah, it's just. I just. Hey, we're 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 right there with you, brother. We're, we're not, not too that far. far off. Um, yeah. You're good, but <laughs> good. I I think also like for what it's worth, I think that's the most important part of a relationship and especially a friendship. Like it's easy to be there when it's going well and when mm-hmm. you only have good news. Everybody could do that. Sure. You could have fifty million friends there mm-hmm. when it's doing well. You see your real friends when things goes to shit and totally. you don't have much to offer. That's mm-hmm. when you see your real people. Yeah, man. And I'm telling True. anybody out there, it's impossible to have like like 200 real friends. Out there. Like it won't happen. Like it's like you choose totally. your people as time goes and you see who and, and you might be surprised sometimes. Right. Of who it is. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, like man. you you sure seem to be at that place now. You know your people, mm-hmm. you know what you want and nobody can buy you is what I'm hearing right now. You, totally. You're going to throw away opportunities if it means being fake right totally mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. Yeah. it's 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 scary to do but with your experience i feel like you're there and yeah i mean yeah i'm, I'm lucky with the podcast if i i this i'm lucky that i have i've been here before you know as if, if i didn't have the band I, I would probably be a lot i probably wouldn't have done it to be honest i'd be scared or probably would have maybe i maybe i would have buckled but uh i've been here before you know it's cool yeah it's a good thing fuck it's everybody a it's a good thing <laughs> that's the caffeine talking yeah, I, I feel you man four coffees like i'm not i'm not used I'm not used to that oh my let's, goodness uh, let's do we had we had some uh uh some viewer questions from from the discord we could maybe end off with a few few rapid fire cool. questions if you if you don't mind mm-hmm, of course what's um favorite corn song Ooh. uh guys of life because that's what got me in into heavy music Okay. Change. That's it. Yeah. Change. Change my life. Still, I'm still here because of it. Why? Why is Drop A superior? <laughs> uh, because I'm lazy. <laughs> you just don't want to change the tuning. <laughs> no. Well the, well, the thing about Drop A is like that's like the because corn is standard A, and I didn't like I didn't like I didn't like doing bar chords, so I just dropped it. It was just, it's more, it's a little easier Heavier for- Heavier at the same time, why not? Yeah, and also like the, that the drop A, that's like, to me, it wasn't a tuning. Like it, that, that's like the f- frequency in my body. Uh, there's just something mm. about A. I just, I, I try going higher and lower. It's like, this, it's like the sound of my body. It's weird. Sweet spot. Yeah. yeah. Sick, okay. 
Uh, okay, last one. This one may, may, may be a little less rapid fire, but I'm still still curious. Um, how does one achieve the guitar tone from the cleansing? How much of the production was a part of getting that tone? I'm assuming not oh. that much because it was kind of like a live thing, but mm -hmm. but maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong. Good question. Uh, both. Yeah, both where we were as a band, uh, being original, creative, knowing knowing what we wanted, and then finding a producer that wanted the same thing. Uh, it's kind of it's just like a lightning in a bottle, like because I, I talk about this every, every once in a while. Like the producer we went with, like no one did it. Like mm -hmm. we we I think maybe back then we kind of hoped bands would get it like if we went with a producer that wasn't metal right he wasn't a metal guy it's okay we, we want something different we want to be ourselves there's there's no blueprint either there's no like oh this guy mixed this fucking yeah you, didn't, you band. didn't go there th like <laughs> expecting like, us to you know, like, no. give me this this band's tone like you don't that know. wasn't it no yeah. reference <laughs> and yeah we went, we went with this guy named john travis and it was like oh he did a rock devil without a cause Sugar Ray, Static X, we're like, we're in. I mean, there's no, like, back then there was no thought process. Oh, if we, when it felt right, we, like, we, like, we fucking did it. And we met it, we met with them in person on Sunset Boulevard. Uh, at the time, there was the whiskey across the street. There used to be the, the uh, Hustler store. So, so we have a meeting at a Hustler store. I'm not sure why we went there, but, uh, <laughs> we all sat around with John Travis and we told him what we wanted and, he, he shared the vision he had ideas and we just felt it was an instant it was an instant like okay like he wants to do, we're like we want to do a live record you know record at the same time and then he saw us live at the whiskey it's like okay i mean this is what yeah this, like he he, under, he understood he, the vision like he, he got it he saw that he heard the sound and he mm -hmm. was like okay i know where i can take this mm -hmm. time i think thing. he nailed it i think it's fair to yeah. I think it's fair to say yeah and uh he had experience what, what i noticed about big producers like like we're, we're not talking deathcore we're not talking even rock no, no, like, no. Big, big. like yeah, this yeah. dude did kid rock ross robertson yeah. the corn and slipman these these are what what they both have in common there is no ego. There's mm. no ego and there's no laziness. Like yeah. they just want to get like something crazy to come out of the, the fucking speakers. Like they That's the, all love. They are very special people. They are special humans, man. They just know they're not lazy. They just okay, let's, let's fucking try it. Okay, you have a crazy idea. Let's fucking try it. And then it's just, to this day, I mean, they're they're both unmatched and John Travis like no ego did every little detail he could put into it he did it's not because th these days you, you deal with like oh let's only use one kick drum oh let's sample it or you use only one guitar cab one head i'm just like it's been a f yeah it's like uh, it's about how how simple can we how get can it make to it be more as a process it's been, a, f yeah, it's been yeah. a fucking nightmare since the cleansing like <laughs> it's been a fucking nightmare like i'm i'm so tired of hearing making things simple like what john travis did Okay, we set up in a room, and uh, for for the guitars, he uh, there was there. So we had so you had the big main room, but they had two, which I haven't seen since. There's there's two ISO rooms. So we, so me and Mark had our full yeah. stack in each room. So I had my own little ISO room, but I was in the same room with Alex and Mark yeah. and our bass player. Mark had his cabin, his ISO room, and John Travis did not touch shit he's like okay this okay so is this, is this your tone okay don't take out the pedals don't take out the compressors nothing like yeah, well, yeah. producers do they, they do it every time he kept mm -hmm. e everything to the cables okay th this is your setup okay we'll put two mics we'll do a room mic shit that makes no it makes no today it makes no sense it <laughs> yeah. makes what he did makes no fucking logical sense and it's the same thing with mark he put the bass the bass cab also two cabs shit that producers do not do uh, yeah. he said oh, is that is that your rig okay keep it there everything the cape <laughs> everything okay, two fucking two massive fucking bass cabs in the there's no ice room so we, we kept the bass cabs in the same fucking tracking room holy shit so maybe i added a little bit of like explainable un unexplainable shit on, on the drum mics mm. alex same thing this fucking his his, yeah, his, yeah. his kit that 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 he uses live and obviously with john travis i mean with his experience with miking and 
being original. That's the difference. That, because only only the best producers will be able to work with that kind of a setup. For sure. Right? Mm-hmm. The, the, those people run circle. Like, they wouldn't be able... The, the mm. I don't know. The, the smaller producers wouldn't know how to get that to sound good. No. That's mm. why you go to them. Right? Yeah. And uh, he did... He just shared the yeah. It's everything he did was un unconventional. It was just, mm. but uh, yeah, his miking technique and that he brought in. Also, he was he brought in his own gear. Being like that, that's when I felt I was like, oh, we're doing something serious. Like he, we, you walk in a studio for the first time in your life, and he he's bringing in cases of his own rack gear. I was like, oh, yeah. he's like he and his skim, he and his skim, anything, and uh, that yeah, just fucking. Also, uh, uh, like the last piece of the puzzle, trust. For sure, yeah. I trusted him. I trusted him. Um, probably, probably the uh, the most. He, I know he really got. He really wanted to get what the fuck was out of, was in my body and our bodies to come out of those two speakers. And that's something. It sounds common sense, but when you start having experience. It's like, oh, I'm, this, I'm sure this, most, this is rare. I'm sure dude. that's not how most conversations go. This in the is studio. rare as fuck, um, dude. Yeah. And he, he he got he got our our souls out to come out of those two speakers. It's cool. That's awesome. That's so sick, mm. dude. The, the, thanks for sharing that, sure. man. That that's actually really fucking it sick was to a hear. Great I, I love that insight. Answer. And okay, I really I have two little questions. If you gotta go, Chris, honestly, you can be honest because I have fifty. But I would have two last right, little things. All right, fine. We're good. Yeah, we're done. We, we, yeah, we got okay. like ten minutes. We're good. Perfect. Uh, so the first one, if, if it's okay, dumb as well. Like, no, I, no, I no, just, no. okay, okay. So the first one would be when you go on stage now, like b- because you you you're doing cool festival, like still doing cool mm-hmm. things with you know so many people's in front of you. Mm-hmm. Do you have the when, when you're about to go on stage with your band, like are you fully in the moment, or do you sometime? you know, look at this and, and, and think about you in the past and be like, we're still here. And we're about mm-hmm. like, do you have these moments where you're just being proud of yourself for still mm-hmm. being here? And like, it's word. And mm-hmm. that's why we're here. Like, does it happen in your mind? Or it's just like, you're in the moment and you go. Mm. Yeah. Like, like I mentioned earlier, we're not, we're not there yet. Uh, I don't have, I don't have the time to reflect, even though I, I should, I should really <laughs> soak, soak that, soak that stuff in, but I'm not there yet. Like, Especially when, especially when it's a festival, I like the festivals because they're a big stage, and um, there's usually a band. There's usually a band before you that you can watch, and I'll yeah. and I'll, I'll go in like the corner where no, no one can see me. But I put a hood on. I'll have like uh, I'll have earbuds on and just fucking practice. And um, as the band's playing or we're setting up, I'll look because these festivals, I mean, they're, they're just, the speakers are fucking just tall as fuck like, yeah, yeah, it's like yeah. it's like a fucking three-story house man like I, so i just look at i look at stage left my side of stage i, I look i look at the speakers and this practicing i'm like i'm i'm, I'm gonna fuck you up i'm, I'm looking at I'm like <laughs> i'm like i'm trying to get my get in the mode like how am i gonna get what am i trying yeah. to say today mm. what am i trying to say and i'm trying to get the, okay. the energy and emotion and what's in my heart out to come out of those speakers and to hit every human hit every human there and and put down any wall that that they might have that day. Just hit them with yeah, just yeah, pure yeah. pure emotion. That's that's awesome. And my last question, uh, it's not the most original question, but it's one of my favorite. If you could go back in time and and talk to yourself, like to young Chris, like it could be any advice, just a sentence, whatever. What would mm-hmm. you tell yourself? You know, maybe to reassure you or something. You know, Chris, what, what, Chris on the dino sheets. Yeah, like yeah. What, what would you tell yourself if you, if you could? Oh fuck! It's a big question. No, it's it's, it's so it's so bizarre because I was thinking about that yesterday. Like what, like what, what would I tell myself with all the mistakes that that were made, especially as a kid? Like man, what, what would you tell yourself, man? Or you try to find like the most universal thing that can be applied to as many problems as possible. <laughs> yeah, I mean there were there were there were a few big ones that that, that we could have fixed. But I'm like, what could have, what one thing could I said that could have fixed those few things? Like, mm. yeah, I mean a big mistake was um, not talking to Mitch when I, when more when, when I was a kid. When things took off, I really I lost touch with them, and mm. that's my. 
main regret in my in my life were uh yeah if we, if we hung out more which means like because the interviews were, were were with him and, and mark when they should have been with, with him and me yeah. and this is what we could uh, i don't know what i don't know how i, I could have fixed that as like as a kid and fucking right like what do you tell someone to, yeah. yeah i had a when, when when i was a kid i had a fucked up grill and i, I didn't like it kind of added to my stutter and I didn't like smile at all. I didn't talk at all. I was just really insecure about, about, about my teeth. And, um, sounds dumb. I'd be like, dude, brush your fucking teeth. You go, go to the fucking dentist, fix your fucking teeth, <laughs> hang out, hang out with your friends and smile more, go fucking hang out. And we do, cause then when the interviews come, I, sh- I should have been there. Mm-hmm. I sh- when, when we're on t- all these badass tours, I should have been hanging out with the bands. And I just wish I fixed my, my bullshit sooner. Like, smiled more i was I, but i don't know what, what i would say though I, I i thought about it yesterday i'm like what what, what was what's that universal thing that i could say i know i know i know where i fucked up but, yeah, but yeah. what would i tell that kid well it seems like go the dentist to, go hey. to the dentist and fix your shit honestly, honestly kind it of probably would have worked into a few of those <laughs> things in the future afterwards right yeah all like because you don't know you don't know what you have till it's gone yeah, and yeah. um Mitch is was by by far the coolest guy I ever met in my life, and I I did I didn't know what we had. It's like man, just being a kid, I wish we hung out more. Yeah, I mean, we, I mean, we we both fucked up. I mean, we we didn't have the communication skills to hang out with each other. Like he went his own way, mm-hmm. I went my own. Way. We, we're still friends throughout the whole. Pro- but like you know, like life's so fast. Yeah, yeah. He he, uh, mm-hmm. he had he had a daughter. Uh, I was doing, I was I, I was getting blacked out, drunk all the time. I was. So right. I, just, I, I just wish, cause he, uh, yeah, he would. I wish like, man, Clemson comes out and he's like he's doing mushrooms with the people and getting high. Like that 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 should have been with me. Like we could have mm. just experienced that stuff. Yeah, we just could have. We really could have honed in on on the music. We really could have, uh, and maybe could have saved the. Uh, Obviously, would have, could have, what, what would have happened? But uh, right. yeah, it's hard. It's, it's, I don't know. Yeah, I, don't, I guess. Yeah, go, go to the dentist. <laughs> that, <laughs> there that, you that, have it. That that, that would have fixed a lot, a, a a lot of stuff, man. I know that's not like a big like. Oh wow, he said that, but it's it's very it's very true, no, man. No, but I mean, yeah, yeah, no. I mean, with the context, it makes sense, man. Yeah, because I know I. Yeah. I, at the time, I truly believe it was either going to be him or me. He was fucked up. I was fucked up, and I, unfortunately, he was. It was him. Yeah. And um, man, we were man, we were we were both fucked up. And um, yeah, you know, we we should have focused on the business more. And this, unfortunately, like it's just it just takes. I was just talking about praying uh, this week with Ernie. Was, unfortunately, like to to change ourselves, we need like these these, these moments in our lives to fucking I yeah. like, fucking wake up, dude. And I remember like back then, I was I was I was on the verge of quitting the band, twenty five, twenty six, like right right before he passed away. I was like, I'm fucking done with this shit. It's, it's over. I can't mm-hmm. I can't do this shit anymore. And um, I just wish we. The, the only way it changed that's 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 what it took for me to, to become who i am now like a, yeah. a podcast host and a business dude a leader a face of a band a a, a boyfriend a, a son it took it took me losing everything to become the person i am today and this sucks yeah, yeah it, it, it just took that it just sucked that it took him dying for for me to become who I am, it's just fuck is, but yeah, it's unfortunately that life when you're young, you need you need these kind of crazy moments to like shake you, and then that was unfortunately that was, that was a moment that 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 shook me enough to where everything changed. Yeah. Now, yeah, I mean, yeah. like like you said, you know, we can't you can't predict that sort no. of stuff, no, and you like can't, you, you, can't. you know, sh- shit's gonna happen regardless. You can try and plan young, for as much as, as as much as you yeah, want. You know. Sucks. Like you're you said, the, the going through stuff. Uh, you're doing your yeah. best. You don't know, you know, like you're thinking about mm-hmm. so many things. You're young. You want to experiment. So like, it's it's a yeah. tough balance, honestly. Mm-hmm. And not everyone can go through that. But like, for what it's worth, you're 
answer was like very like i didn't want to put you on the spot and it was like a very beautiful like that's that's honestly the best advice you could ever give anyone on 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 the planet like the mm -hmm. most valuable thing we have is time with our people that's totally. the most like nothing's totally. gonna beat that and i think that's totally. the best advice you could ever give and we mm -hmm. and i love talking about these things you never know who needs to hear that right now as they're you know. listening so you It, it sucks that you had to go through that and stuff like that. But just by talking about it, you don't know how many people won't do the same mistake just because mm -hmm. they hear about it and they're like, I need to wake up and 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 then do stuff. So Good. so thank you for for sharing that. Thank you, you for know. sharing, man. Yeah. yeah, anytime. Yeah, you don't you don't really you know the, our life is not guaranteed, man. You don't know you're hanging out. Remember one moment I'm hanging out with my my best friend, and the next you know. Yeah, he was uh he he died at he died in in a hospital and uh the only people there were me, our previous manager. Um some people were in the band were too scared to show up. Um oh, so, so it, was, oh. it was it was it was it, so I was the only band member there and it's mm -hmm. in New York. I'm probably there for like eight hours because he crashed on a Halloween night and then in, I get in the morning, I get, I get, yeah. get get the call and I, any every I remember like the doctor coming in um, and I, I could see blood on, on his scrubs. I'm like, this is not good. And like, they're, 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 they're trying to save, save, save his life. Yeah. And then you're like, you're, you're like, you're like allowed to see him. So it was like, that was technically he was alive when I saw him mm. last, te technically, but he's just laying there. It's like, fuck, that's, that's just crazy. And then, Once uh, this is gonna be a hell of a way to to, to finish off this podcast. <laughs> uh, this, but yeah, I it's mean, my fault. So. No, 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 it's fine. I, I back it. And then, yeah, he. Uh, I didn't know that you're like allowed to like be around when things happen. So like, just like a movie, you know, the doctors are kind of freaking out. There's more nurses kind of rushing around the table, probably around 5 a.m. And then he literally, he literally died in front of me. It's yeah, it's like. And then, That's rough. Yeah, that, but, yeah. and uh, I, I I shared this once before, but um, I did think I did think about something, and that was uh, no matter what it takes, no matter what it takes, this band is not stopping. Period. Yeah. Period. Period. And I kind I kind of kept that because uh, you know I I can't put words to his mouth. I, I will never do that. I mm -hmm. I don't know. What, but all I have is. What would I want him to do? That's kind of all I have. Yeah. So it's like, okay, I don't want him to keep going. I don't want him to fucking. It's it's, it's his band too. Yeah, to continue continue the legacy and yeah. and, and, and yeah. you know you know and and then on, to honor him in a way, right? Also totally. And then to, uh, to, to to close it off, we got a hold of his iPad a few days later, and uh, okay. he was looking up and in the world uh stuff <laughs> like because there's there supposed to there's supposed to be this big earthquake in socal he, 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 yeah. he was big on like <laughs> conspiracy so it was like it was like and the world stuff that I, i went over to his notepad yeah fuck, fuck yeah, yeah. it's fucking crazy and then it says you can't stop me yeah that's it that's it that's what that's the game and those You had wow. the lyrics for for one of the for well for that song on the on the next album, right? Those were yeah, his. That's why he's that's why wow. he that's why he's a legend. Absolutely, wow, man, that's man. crazy, Holy shit. crazy, and that's uh that's a good way to drop it, huh? That's a good way to end it. Dude, it's <laughs> thank, you, thank you so much for sharing. Yeah, cool. you, you you have you have no idea how 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 cool it is to 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 hear that sort of thing from from you, you know, uh, specifically. And and dude, re rest in rest in peace, man. Uh, rest yeah. in peace, the, Mitch, man. Uh, the goat rest man, in power, man. The, yeah, he's, he's always gonna he's be goat. though. Always gonna be. Everybody's saying it. Always gonna be the ghost, the ghost he for is, real. Man. Like, I S still see. Guy. For what it's worth, by the way, on my channel, even if the video doesn't touch, of course, I love to plug you guys in pretty much all of the videos I'm Appreciate making. That. But like, <laughs> oh, it's it's my pleasure for sure. But you guys are always my example. But like, mm -hmm. um, I see comments out of nowhere all the time saying that he's still to go. That you guys are so like, it's always gonna love, be there. A lot of love out there for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, for sure. Cool. So. Thanks for well, sharing thank all you. of that, man. Yeah. For for real, means the Anytime. world to us. No, th thank you guys right. for the support. It's why uh, it's why I chose to uh, to do the channel, to, to do the uh, podcast. You guys have been a uh, been a uh, push in the genre. So I don't do uh, I don't do podcasts or interviews based on like following or count. 
Yeah. yeah. But do, do I do I respect what they're doing? Okay, then I'll 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 do it. I couldn't even believe it if I'm honest. I was outside <laughs> playing like disc golf out of nowhere. I'm like, that's not real. Like it's not Let's go. <laughs> it wrote to me. But like Let's go. and I loved your answer. If I can just share it real quick, mm -hmm. you I said that I was waiting for the podcast to be bigger before inviting you. And you said like fuck this, invite people. You know what yeah. I mean? And I thought it was a cool I I, I think cool. it was a cool thing to answer, by the way. Cool. Like, yeah. But, we were both extremely happy Sick, and our community man. couldn't believe it. So cool. it means everything to us that, that, that you were here today for real. Thank you guys, man. It was, it was, a, it was a nice little, uh, caffeine infused roller coaster. <laughs> 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 I was emotional. I'm, I'm, I'm high on caffeine. I'm like, this is crazy. Let, let, <laughs> we, just, we just, we just went through a trip, man. Let's go right there with you. Let's go. Oh, man. All right. Cool, man. All right, man. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I don't know if you have anything that you want to plug. Uh, yeah. Closing this out. I know you. You guys are, are what in Indonesia in like two days. <laughs> yeah. what, what do you guys got got going on? Yeah, we leave uh, tomorrow, and we have uh, two more shows: the New Limit Metal Hardcore Fest in September. We just confirmed the show in October. Uh, I guess I can say it. We'll we'll be in SoCal. So uh, do you do some math? Um, there we go. And uh, yeah, thank you for uh, supporting Sudasans. Um, check out the podcast. Now we released a full band podcast last month. Yes. So it's yes. very good. It's very good. Let's see. Uh, when does when this drop? This uh, Saturday, most likely. Okay. Okay, cool. So it'll already be out. Okay. So uh, thank you for supporting my personal podcast out every Monday on YouTube. Uh, every Thursday, we drop the Sudasans podcast. Uh, by the time this one comes out, we have our first guest. Two parts with oh nice with uh, oh. with uh, Brandon Chapetti. So cool. so we were talking about old school shit and it was it was, it was awesome. And uh, so Hell yeah. so check that out. Obviously check out the records. Um, shout out to all the bands supporting Deathcore, playing Deathcore. Shout out to Warner Shore, Slaughter to Prevail. Um, all the bands just doing it at a fucking high level that fucking keeps us here. You know, you said you've got new merch coming in also, I think for your, that's what you said for, for the podcast oh, yeah, yeah, and everything. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So, uh, you want to support the podcast, uh, check out the YouTube memberships, uh, and buy some merch that will be popping up later this month. Perfect. There cool. We go. Hell yeah. Awesome. Hell yeah. Well, dude, thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time. This is fucking awesome, man. Well, man. Uh, thank you. We'll, we'll keep in touch, man. All right. Appreciate, for sure. Appreciate you guys. Thank you. Later. Thank you. All right. Take care, man. See you, man.